on a beautiful fall-like evening here in the mountains. Welcome in to Countdown to Kickoff on the U-Pike Sports Network. James Carter, Char Charlie Pinson, happy to have you along with us here tonight. The Union Bulldogs roll in, 1-3 and three on the year. In the midst of a three-game losing streak, they'll play the 2-2 two and U-Pike two Bears who exercised the bye week and had a nice win over Faulkner last time out. Charlie, you look at the games 2-2 two and two through non-conference play, but uh, this is when the games matter the most. This is your first game in the new AAC. Uh, this is a great opportunity to kind of set your best foot forward. It is. You know, you at a team that UPAC in general is familiar with, Union, they used to be in the Mid-South Conference, so played them quite a bit down there and here. So the team shouldn't be any big shocks there, but Union coming in looked like they're struggling a little bit. The Bears have been Ladies on a take time, here the last couple of weeks. They play. I thought they played better. Midfield for tonight's coin toss. The uh, two teams, that, like you said, this is the 17th all-time meeting. They're 8-8 eight and eight overall in the two. Haven't met since 2018, and that's because of the, the shifting of the conference and so forth. But uh, here today, a, a team that, when you look at it on paper, they've had some very close contests. They've had some opportunities to be there. But the one thing that I think, and I talked with Coach Phipps about this just a few while ago, this is a team that is air raid first. They're, when you have a team that can throw the football at will, they're never out of a football game. I mean, you've got to really put them away, you know. But, of course, now I thought that the Bears played a really good game last week. They swept the uh, conference uh, players of the week, all three positions. So, you know, hopefully that gives them a little bit of confidence coming in. And I, I think if we can get a pass rush on them and make it make it harder for them to throw it, you know, I think we may have played a little bit tougher schedule than they have early on as well. I think so, too. And you look at it on the other side with uh, the re return of Alex Sanders into the backfield, and I talked with Coach Phipps after the game. I said, how much more comfortable do you feel like that Lee feels back there with him? And he said 100%. And you could really tell it Lee was more in his kind of his realm of things. And, again, when you have somebody that's standing beside of you for three, four years at a, at a time, that kind of makes a lot of sense. Well, you know, he's uh, the career leader after last week in carries. So hit the U-Pike, and that's something that's big numbers right there to carry the football. But he's a safety valve for him, too. He knows where he's going to be at. He knows he can catch the football if he needs to throw a little a quick hitter out to the outside. And, you know, just it just and I don't, I don't, you know, makes you feel comfortable. That's, I think it's about a good words I can think of. And uh, also he has now the career all-time lead for most 100-plus yard rushing games. He went for 121 and 19 totes, and it was something that, the, the Bears established a passing attack. They started trying to really ratchet down the, the passing attack. They went back to Sanders with the running attack. And uh, it's just something that you see that they do so well when they can go hand in hand with each other. You're right. Looks like the Union won the toss, and they will defer until the second half. So the Bears, which I think suits Corey Phipps just fine, get the football to start the ball. Yeah, he's always one of those. He's not one of those defensive-minded guys. If he wants the football, if he thinks he can get it, it's still a, a, a possession away that he'll certainly do so. But uh, when you look at what Union does, again, it goes through their quarterback, Walker Russell. Seven touchdowns, three interceptions, 569 yards on the season. Uh, last time out, he threw the ball 53 times in the loss to Campbellsville, 37-27. Went for 264, three touchdowns and two interceptions. The interesting number that jumped out to me on the stat sheet when I was looking through Union stuff, they do not have a rushing touchdown on the season. Well, that's that's huge. And I mean, and I thought I think our secondary has played pretty well this season. They've had a couple of picks already, so maybe that's what they're looking for. Maybe to grab a couple of picks early on and put this team, you know, put them on their heels a little bit. Keys of the game for both teams, Charlie. I'll start first with Union offensively. You look at what you you talk about, averaging just under 280 for a game, 191 uh, through the air, 92 on the ground. What do you see their keys are here today to come away with a win? Well, I mean, you got to stop that passing game. But force them to do what they're not comfortable with and run the football and try to make them run it up into the meat of that defense. Don't let them get to the corners and use their speed. Over to, to you, Pike, again for them to start, more importantly, get back above 500, but start in AAC Conference play 1-0. What's the keys to the game for them to win? I think defensively, I think defense is going to be a real key to the game today. You've got to play that passing game. This team's probably thrown the ball more than anybody we've seen all season. It's going to test the secondary. I think the linebacker core is going to be huge. They can put pressure on the quarterback. They can drop back in uh, coverage as well. So I think that's going to be the biggest key. The offense, I think, is comfortable and is going to be able to move the football. You know, the two guys that's been so big in that linebacking core, Levi Evans and Anthony Grant, they have been huge in that interior, which is, like you said, allow those outside backers to drop in coverage in the zone, bring some extra guys on the field, but also still get a good pass rush with those three guys up front. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, we're ready for football. U-Pike and Union, AAC Conference time. And we continue 
on Countdown to Kickoff on the UPI Sports Network. Union has won the coin toss. They're going to defer, so the Bears will get the football first and see what they can do here to start things off this evening. Again, uh, the safe bet here today, Car uh, Charlie, and uh, under the new system of sports betting allowed in the, in the state of Kentucky, to have a safe bet today, team in orange and black is going to win. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll put all my money on that. There's no question. U Pike will be in the black tops with the white bottoms of white lids. Union in the white tops with the black bottoms and the black lids. So, uh, Union College uh, down the way, kind of nestled in between London and Corbin in that area. A very beautiful town there in Barberville, Kentucky. A uh, very small, quaint town. Not, not nearly the size that you have here in Pikeville, but you see a lot of similarities there where it's nestled right on the edge of the Appalachian right. Mountains. It is. It's right off the interstate, too. Not too hard to get to out there. I mean, not right off the interstate, but not far. So getting ready to tee things up for the visiting. I guess we're going to go play without the clock running down. The officials got everything set. The clock still set at a minute yeah, he 39. Said, he said, let's run with it. So Dustin Brown will have it teed up. And we're ready for some football, whether the officials say, well, who needs a clock? Yep. Back deep to return for you, Pike, is Yukari Baker. He'll split it between two returners on the backside. On the far side is Derek Griffith. Near side is B.B. Braylon Barton. Griffith had a big game in the first half of the win over Faulkner. Had seven catches for 37. Ben Henson was the man that really carried the load. Four catches for 114 and a touchdown. Lee Kirkland, 224 yards, 23 of 39, two touchdowns. A clean afternoon, did not throw an interceptions. And then, again, Alex Sanders' return uh, from the injury. 19 carries for 121. We'll see the offense on the field first. So Brown has it teed up. He'll split the hash marks at the 35, kicking right to left as we view it here at Hambly. And a little pooch kick to the far sideline. Bears will call for the fair catch. They'll take it at their own 35-yard line. And here we go. AAC Conference play is officially underway. I think that's good field position to start the ballgame. Uh, that, that tells me something, though, that they're a little bit afraid of the return capability of UPI. Well, and you look at, you know, they typically you've got BB and Derek back deep. They move them up and put Baker behind them. So you've got your speed guys up, and I think that's one of the things you look at right there. They said, no, we don't want any part of this. And, Here's Upike coming out. What do they do first? Empty. Yep. So Lee Kirkland on the far side hash mark. Three hats across the line for the visiting Bulldogs. Now they'll shift Sanders into the backfield on the right side. Blitz coming off the left edge. Sanders takes the handoff, dives forward for a yard. Second and nine. Yeah, you know, didn't get a very good uh, blocking on that left side or left side on that one. Got a yard out of it. Tried a little trickeration there to catch him off guard. And Sanders did a good job there of kind of directing himself to that side. That was the side the blitz was coming off of, but could not find the spot. They'll stay empty again. Kirkland's going to throw this time. Fires it out to the far sideline and rifles this one over top of the head of Alex Sanders. And quickly, it's third down and nine for the Bears as the clock rests with only 28 yeah. seconds gone here in the first quarter. Three receivers near side, Henson, Griffith, and Barton. Sanders in the left pocket, third and nine. Bears 41% of the time this season have converted. 
And this is not a situation where you would look at it as a, a four-down territory. You certainly don't want to hand the ball no. back to your opponent in great field position. Four-man rush. Trying to go for the home run ball. Far sideline and a great catch. Does he haul it in? And he does. Wow. What Beautiful. a catch on the far sideline as they float it in to Amari Hardwick. And Hardwick flips the field and takes it down to the 30. Can't ask for any better than that. First down, Bears. Kirkland fakes the handoff, lowers the shoulder, and dives forward to the 25. He's a load for a quarterback running the ball now. Tremonte Gardner making the stop. Kirkland, 6'6", 255. Uh, it's like a bowling ball yeah. coming at you. Second and five on the gain of five on first and ten. Knocking on the orange zone door are the Bears. Kirkland wants to throw. Rifles it out into the zone. He's got his man there, Ben Henson, on the far side seam. He's inside the 15. And quickly the Bears marching, and this is the – High-powered offensive attack we saw much of last year, that hurry-up yep. offense where they're just really getting it and going. Yeah, get that rhythm going and get just kind of keep them off their feet. They'll put Sanders in the slot far side. First and 10 for the Bears, their second first down of the contest. Sanders a deep motion. They'll swing it out to Sanders on the near side. He gets a block, cuts back in ah. at the 10. See you at the 5. Into the end zone he goes. Touchdown, Upike. 13-yard touchdown strike. Alex Sanders hauls it in from Alex Kirkland. 13-14 to go here in the first quarter. Bears lead this one 6 nothing. A minute 46 for the drive. That's pretty impressive. And a very good job on the block right here on the near side. Yes. It allowed him to cut back at the five and get in the end. He was untouched. They, they, they came out firing, looking good. So, Jake Headley, special teams player of the week a couple of weeks ago. Low snap. Holder gets it down. That's Joseph Sandorf, and he'll bang it through. 7 nothing. our score back after this on the U-Pike Sports Network. Six plays, 65 yards, one minute, 46 seconds for the Bears to punch it in the end zone. Alex Sanders hooks up with Lee Kirkland. 7-0, our score, 13-14 to play here in the opening quarter. So the Bears ready to boot it away. Two men deep for the nice Bulldogs kick. and a deep kick that bounces a yard in the end zone for the touchback. It's always good when you can get no return. Yeah, it's uh, you see that so much now. But the higher the level you go, it's just it's almost like the return game is gone, and it's it's you it's odd when you see a player that fields a, a kickoff and tries to bring it out of the end zone. It's like, what are you doing? It's especially because now you can yeah. you get the free twenty five yards. Yeah, you get the extra five the extra five yards once you used to get. I agree with that. Big big play right here, Bears. See if they can come out and set the tone early on the defensive end. So Walker Russell, six foot three, two hundred pound senior out of Alcola, Tennessee, five hundred sixty nine yards, seven touchdowns, three interceptions on the season. He'll start it on first and ten from his own twenty five. Play action, wants to throw, looking far sideline, zips this one out to his man, had Tony Norman on the far sideline and just dropped it. Slippery fingers. He had that. It was right there where it belonged. Perfect route up and out, and uh, just kind of set down right there at the sticks. Second down and 10, clock resting, 13.09, first quarter. As we always say, hit him in the wrong place, right in the hands. Yeah. We, we, you, you see some of those guys on the secondary, they're like, why can't I play receiver? Because you can't exactly. catch the football. There's a reason you're over there. You don't catch the football. Offset pistol look for Russell on second and 10. Gives it off to his tailback as he'll sweep it to the near side. That's Taji Jackson. 
Sophomore out of Nicholasville, Kentucky, East Jessamine High School. 37 carries for 167 on the year. Averaging just under 42 a game. It's going to be third down and six as he'll get out to the 29 on the near hash. I thought they did a good job stretching that out, moving it all the way, letting the linebacker come up and finish the playoff there on the outside. Union 19% on third down conversions this season, 11 of 57. Big opportunity here for the Bears to kind of set the tone, leading 7-0 after a nice quick six play drive that puts six on the board. Russell takes the snap, pressure coming up the middle, low throw toward Chris Thomas at the 36. It's incomplete. And the Bears force a quick three and out. And they'll get the football back, leading 7 0 with 12 24 and arrested clock. Good coverage there, in that, especially in that middle, like we talked about, those linebackers stepping up, making the coverage. And, you know, this team heavy place to throw the football. Hunter Fleming will kick it away. He'll have Braylon Barton, the senior out of Calhoun, Georgia, standing back at his own 35. No win to speak of at all here on a very nice evening here in Pikeville, 70 degrees. Still a little plume of smoke hanging across the way after the opening kickoff fireworks. Barton comes up, fields it at the 40, wow. shifts near side, gets a block 45 across midfield in front of his bench, and then his pinball and out of bounds just shy of the 35. A nice return there as Barton stood in the face of a defender, made the catch, and then a little nice little shift of the feet and turns it into great field position for the Bears leading 7-0. Risky catch, but he made the best of it once he got the football. And you see a lot of times when guys make that catch like that, the defender has to stop, and yeah. they can't get moving quick enough to get back in position. Yeah, you get them in that bubble area, and it's hard to do anything with it. So here comes Kirkland and his crew. They'll start on their own 36 near hash mark. Trips left, one right. That's Griffith. See if he goes long, try to put one in. I would expect quickly. them to try to go up for a home run ball right here. They're going to look it out to the far sideline, out to Sanders. Sanders slips a tackle, goes through the middle, 30-25, and shoved out of bounds on the far sideline by Jamarius McClellan. First and 10 Bears. They're making good decisions right now. That was a beautiful little pass. You know, anytime you pick up 11 yards, 12 yards on first down. They'll go empty. They'll go quick. Three receivers wide right for Kirkland now. He'll shift Sanders back in the backfield to the right side. Play action, Kirkland rolling out right, looking toward the end zone. Nothing there. He'll fire it on his check down to Ben Henson, the junior from Lehman, South Carolina. He goes into the replay tent. He's down inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. Gain of five, second and five. Well, his decision-making so far in this ballgame has been really good. This looks like the Lee Kirkland of last season. Yes. He looks comfortable. He looks mobile and is moving around very nicely. He's got a... Wide left side this time. He'll rifle it down near side, and it was nearly picked off. Paul Maxwell jumped the route at the 10 and swatted it down. Maxwell already with an interception on the season. That one falls incomplete, and it's third and six. Yeah, he wanted that one bad. Kirkland tried to force that one in, and Maxwell there, the junior, able to read it nicely and got his left hand out there and swatted it away. 11-23 and arrested clock and offset pistol look with Sanders behind Kirkland. He'll shift him out of the backfield. Kirkland pumps, looks to the end zone, going on the post route, had Ben Henson at the goal line and can't haul it in. A big hit there by Jamarius McClellan, the sophomore jarred it loose. It's fourth down. Do you kick the field goal? Uh, not, if you're, not if you're the Bears. <laughs> we know what's coming. Fourth down conversion attempt, six of 17 on the season for 35% of the time. Kirkland will go on a twin set. Fourth down and six from the 19 of the Bulldogs. Trying to get motion up front. Play clock is at 15 as they'll reset the offense and snap it here inside of 10. Pressure coming off the edge. Kirkland pumps. Floats it toward the near side. He's got his man there at the 10, but it's going to be just we'll shy. Be, uh, Derek we'll Griffith. Goes up and hauls it in. He's at the nine, and they'll say move the sticks. Yep. First and ten. Perfect route there by the ju the graduate student out of Sacramento. Needed six, got exactly six. First and goal for the Bears now. May see a little bit of more Sanders this trip. They're going to bring in a two tight end set. Now Grant Scott and Cade, Cade Cradleball. They'll attach right and left. A receiver each way, Sanders left side of Kirkland. Man goes in motion. 
First and goal from the nine, Sanders. A little jump cut into the hole, stood up just shy of the five. He's gang tackled there by a host of Bulldogs. They'll put him down at the six-yard line. It'll be second down and goal. Ten and a half to play here in the opening period. Upike threatening to grab a two-score lead after a six-play, 65-yard drive. Finished with six on a 13-yard hookup from Sanders or from Kirkland to Sanders. And now they're looking for more here. Kirkland gets motion off the near side. They jump back without contact. Kirkland resets. Three receivers left, one right. That's Griffith. Kirkland eyeing left, steps up, wants to run, throws it. He's got his man into the end zone for six. Touchdown, Upike. That's a bullet right into yes. the hands. I mean, Lee's just, I mean, he's on top of his game right now making decisions. So DeAndre Stafford making the grab. And that quickly, the Bears in front, 14 to nothing with an extra point coming here with Jake Headley. Zandorf gets it down and splits the uprights. 10.02 to go in the first. 14-0 Bears back up to this on the Upike Sports Network. Nothing, 10.02 to go here in the opening quarter. As you pike, seven plays, 36 yards, two minutes, nine seconds. DeAndre Stafford hauls in the touchdown throw from Lee Kirkland. And the Bears in front by a pair of touchdowns here early on. Charlie, it was a play there that Kirkland tucked and started to run. And as soon as he did, he found the, the opening with Stafford sitting right in the middle of the, of the zone there and just rifled it into him. That's something with his, his arm he has that ability to do. And just great vision that time to keep his eye downfield. Driving kickoff that goes over top of the return man's head on the far sideline. And two kickoffs for the Bears, both of those deep into the end zone. And a touchback of the Bulldogs will set up at their own 25-yard line. I mean, right now, both sides of the ball, the Bears are, are dominating the football game. See how you can do on this series offensively, I mean, defensively. And, you, and the one thing that well, we talked about at the beginning of the game as well, this this U-Pike team has been so sound defensively the early on, but the, the Union Bulldogs, they're kind of almost in their, their comfort zone right now, having to play from behind. You've got to use the air raid attack, and that's where they feel comfortable with because of, of not being able to run the football like they wanted to this season. Right. Russell on first and 10, three-man rush to take the give as they'll hand it off to their tailback. Malona Poole making the stop off the edge. He came off the right edge and got to the left edge to make the stop, a gain of two, second and eight. And great line surge that time by the defensive line to get to give him no debt, not much running room. Really on the tackle for the Bears. 9.30 to go here in the opening period. How big would it be, it be if the Bears could get another three and out and go right back down and find yeah. more points? Three, mans, three hats across the line for the Bears here early on. Blitz coming off the edge. Russell steps up, floats it across the middle, finds his man of Tony Norman. He takes the big pop, the sophomore out of Decatur, Alabama. But that'll move the sticks up to the 40-yard line, first and 10 Bulldogs. I thought they had a good rush on, but they, they – Really picked it up well and gave him just enough time to get rid of that ball quickly. Yeah, they brought Chuck Moore on a blitz. He came through the B gap, and that's what opened up that hole for Norman. He had 11 catches for 55 yards and a touchdown, and that loss to Campbellsville last time out. So a fresh set of downs for the Bulldogs, their first first down of the contest. Hand off to their tailback of Taji Jackson. He's across the 40, out to the 42, 43-yard line. Pick up of a Three on first down, second down, seven. 
Levi Evans, redshirt freshman. You talk about a young man that's settled himself into the Bears' defense so nicely. He's kind of become the, the leader. 20 tackles on the season. That's best on the team. Look for him maybe to try to run something like maybe a jet sweep or something here because I'll try to catch Bears off guard because they got a lot of people in the pattern out here. And they've also been trying to set up some, uh, some play action there as well. Russell wants to throw. Pressure coming up the middle. Zips it out near sideline. It finds Quinn Carter, and somehow he hauls that in on a pass that was thrown behind him. The junior with a great grab, shy of the 45, out to the 44. So make it third down and six inside of eight to go. 14-0 here in the first quarter. Bears leading the Bulldogs. Nice catch there by Quinn it Carter. Was, yeah. A lot of work for one yard, though. Absolutely. They need to move the football just past the midfield stripe to move the sticks. Russell, the senior, looks at a blitz coming off the edge, finds his man as he dumps it down to Isaiah Johnson. Johnson wow. has the catch at the 49 and then falls across the midfield stripe and to move the sticks. First and 10, Bulldogs. I thought they were going to get him that time. He got rid of it just in time. And great cutback by the receiver to get that extra yard to get the first down. Yeah, Jarquez Russ was the man who blew him up right as he let go of it. He stood in the pocket. He, that was on his side that he could see him coming, and he took the big pop that stood in the pocket there and delivered a ball to get them to move the sticks. So run across the midfield stripe at the Bears' 48-yard line for the Bulldogs. And now our official comes in and stops play. A substitution or what? Not certain, honestly. They're looking toward the Bears sideline. Something to do with the fans, I think. I don't know. Now they're down. Corey Phipps is. Oh, he just took his head, his headset off and looked toward the, the crowd and said something. So said, yell all you want to. I yeah. don't know what, the, what he said to him before that, though. Yeah, there was something said, but yeah. the, here's a handoff nice to job. Jackson, and he gets stonewalled. <laughs> Maybe a whistle or a noisemaker in the crowd because, you know. Yeah, it's, you can't use the artificial uh, noisemakers. Landon Hammock there on the stop for the Bears. Maybe a half yard if that, second down and nine. Hammock, a local Pikeville product. Redshirt freshman out of nearby Pikeville here, 6'1", 293. He knows, how to, he knows what this field oh, feels yeah. like. A couple of banners hanging up there on the wall that he's had a little bit to say about. Walker wants to throw. Rifles this one out to the far side, and a great catch there by Tony Norman. A little bit of theatrics as he jumps and didn't need to. And makes the catch at the 40, but he surges himself backward to the 41. So he actually gave up a yard with the jump and makes it third down and three when it should have been two. Yep. Hopefully that costs him, you know. He's getting a little comfortable throwing the ball back there, though. Need to get some pressure on him. And they've, but every time that he has looked for that quick out, it's gone that direction on the sideline toward Norman. 26 catches for 280 yards on the season. That's the leading receiver for this Bulldogs team. Third down and three. Russell stands in the pocket, now steps up, and he's not going to get free and flying in untouched was Chuck Moore and gets him for the sack back at the 45. The sophomore from Madison, Alabama. Looked like he had been shot from a catapult. Yeah, he, he, he hit him at the 45 and took him all the way back to midfield. And give a hat tip to that front three for the Bears there that forced the pocket to collapse. And John Luttrell is going to burn a timeout with 444 to go here in the opening period, facing fourth down and seven. And again, you, you look at where you are and not having what you would say a well-sustained rushing attack that this Bulldogs team has missed this season. Third down and three, usually that's a, an opportunity to kind of set the ball down and try to run it. They felt like more opportunity was there to pass. The Bears brought the blitz. We've seen it come out of the linebackers quite a lot this evening already and got home there at the time for, for Chucky Moore. I, mean, I like that aggressiveness on the defensive side, especially the team that likes to throw the football. You want to keep that quarterback. You don't want him to get settled in that pocket and get comfortable. 
and hopefully we'll see. Hopefully we'll see him take get a sack or another sack or two out of this. And you look at what this sets up right now. That's the fifth sack this season for the the Bulldogs. Really forced that pocket to collapse very quickly before Walker Russell could step up and. You could kind of see it was almost a design play that if there wasn't something quickly, he was just going to try to shoot up almost as a, as a, qu a quarterback draw. But the hole that he wanted to go through was was gone in a heartbeat. So Hunter Fleming is going to punt it away for the second time tonight. Braylon Barton will stand back at his own 10 with the lights beaming down here at Hambly. Let's we'll see if Fleming can take and stick one in the corner here. Only a second punt End over end kick. Barton will step forward and make the fair catch call at the 15. He gets a little bit of a bump there as the defender gets to him as he makes the catch, but good punt there by the Bulldogs. Will pin U Pike deep. And with 4.38 to play here in the opening period, 14 0 Bears with the football. We're going to talk about it a little bit. I mean, he, he made the fair catch signal. I mean, technically, you could call that. I don't know that, you know. Wasn't much of a bump, so. Yeah, it uh, looks like they've they've decided they're okay with what they've got. So, but you're right. I mean, you, when when the man calls for the fair catch, you have to give them that opportunity to to make that fair catch. So first down and ten from their own 14. Kirkland. Two receivers, right, one left. The high snap play action. Kirkland. Steps up. He's got a man wide open down that's the seam, and that's Derek Griffith. Griffith on the races to the house. He goes. Make it 86 yards to Peter. Touchdown, U Pike. Now that was a, that was the fastest drive of the night, right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. The time on that one is how far it took Derek Griffith to streak 86 yards to the house, and that quickly it's 20 to nothing Bears. Play action perfectly set up there. Kirkland stood was patient in the pocket. Griffith released down the seam and was wide open. So now Jake Edley for another extra point attempt. He's trying to grab a, a quick uh, AAC Special Teams Player of the Week with uh, a perfect outing thus far, yep. three of three. And it's 21-0 with 426 to go here in the first. Back after this on the U Pike Sports Network. Twenty-one to nothing. Four twenty-six to play here in the opening period. One play, eighty-six yards, twelve seconds. Derek Griffith needed to get in the end zone. Lee Kirkland throws his third touchdown pass of the night. He had two coming into the ball game. The Bears' offense has looked very well rested and oiled. And another deep kickoff that tumbles into the end zone for a touchback. So, good job for the. Kicking so far as Austin Shuffler has put three balls in the end zone, so no return attempts for the Bulldogs, and they'll set it up down 21 early. And Charlie, this is uh, a team that you look at Pike, they came into the game averaging 21 and a half points a game. They've got 21 points here, and we still got four and a half to go in the first quarter. Yeah, I mean, they're they well, they've not missed anything yet. I mean, everything they made right to sit well, did throw the one bad pass that got tipped away, but other than that, he's been almost perfect. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something that it's just – it has been uh, Lee Kirkland kind of picking and choosing what he wants to do with it. But already in the first quarter here, looking at the total number of yards, 92 before the 
last, last play. Russell rolling out on first down. He's got his man there of Norman who hauls it in at the 35 and is chased out of bounds over next to his bench. And they'll set up a first down on their first play from this possession, a third first down of the ball game. But first quarter so far for UPike, 14 plays, 187 yards, 178 through the air. That's pretty impressive. And again, they've been able to throw the ball exactly how they want to. Eight of 11 is Kirkland. And as like you said, the only pass that has been kind of maybe a, a bad pass was the one that was tipped away. Other than that, has been very effective in the passing game. First and 10, swing route comes near sideline as they'll get Don't it out work. to Ruggerson, and he has swallowed up. Brent Coleman making the initial hit. Joe Temp in there as well. No gain on the play. They may give him one on the forward progress. Wait for they place the ball. Yeah, they will push him a forward for a yard, make it second down nine. Had officials last night. I had three officials on the field, one on each sideline and one in the middle, and all three of them standing in three different positions. Uh, it's like somebody, please put a football on the field. <laughs> you got all these hash marks. You think you could use one of them to line each other up. Two receivers, right, one left for Russell. Bear showing blitz off the edge and motion up front. I think they looked across and saw Trayvon Barnett as Barnett was showing blitz and got a little bit of movement, so the penalty will back it up five. This Union team averaging seven penalties for 64 yards a game. So they'll go behind the sticks now in second down, make it second and 14. Bears tried to slide the ball back just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you see the nose. If they get there a little early, they could beat the center to the punch. Same set for Russell. Pressure hey, coming. Up. Steps up. Slips free as he comes down the near side. Takes a tough bounce, though. And penalty markers fly late. I don't know. There was that's something. Be on. They pushed off the UPOC player. I don't know if that's going to be – is that reaction to what we'll – see who they got. You yeah, know, yeah they're, they're, you could have could have gone either way here. He'll get out to the 50. It'll be third down and five coming up. He's looking on the UPOC sideline. Is he going to look both ways? You never know. Yeah, you could have offsetting here as well. But Chucky Moore came to the sideline very quickly after that happened, so – We'll wait to see. Bears are starting to move backward, and they're going to walk this one off. And they get that one on Moore. So the personal foul moves it down inside the 40 to the 37, first and 10. Had a good uh, – Blitz on him, but he gave him a chance to slip up the middle that time. And Russell showed off his, his feet there. Again, yep. a big body kid, 6'3", 200 pounds, a senior. Really looks comfortable in the pocket, even with the pressure that Upike has gotten on him early on. A little toss over the middle was looking for Justin Barker, but he led him too much. It was high. It's incomplete, second and 10. 2.51 on a rested clock here in the first. 21-0 our score. He needed a couple more inches on that vertical to get that one. Barker, they don't have him listed with a, a height, but uh, looking at him out there, I would say he's somewhere around a 6'2", 6'3", young man. And, uh, needed to be about 6'8". Needed eight. about 6'8", and maybe a, maybe a catapult to get him up or a tight end. A little tight end pop pass is what they were running there with a – they've got him as a, a wing on the right side. Three hats across the line for the Bears. Russell stands in the pocket, now run, goes forward. Airing it out, trying to go to the back of the end zone, and it's knocked away. Karan Thrower gets in there and swats it away on the deep post route. They were looking for Ruggerson. Third down. Great job not to interfere on that one. Got the ball, got his hand way up in the air. Looking for the deep post route there. You had Ruggerson that had the inside position, but Thrower, a junior, really good job of settling himself. And like you said, using that offhand and not reach across and draw the contact to swat it away. 
So third down and 10, 2.44 to play here in the first. 21 nothing Bears. They've had the ball three times, three passing touchdowns for Lee Kirkland. Bulldogs will stay on that same set. Two receivers right with a, a wing tight end. Charlie Thomas, or Chris Thomas, excuse me, near side. Bears send the linebackers on the blitz. They'll zing it out near side. That's out to Thomas. He catches it in front of the U-Pike bench. Shy of the 30, it's going to be fourth down. Put him down to the 32-yard line. So make it fourth and four. Union 31% on the season on fourth down conversion attempts, four of 13. I totally expect the offense to stay on the field for this one. Yeah, it'd be about it'd be a pretty good about a 47-yard field goal. It'd be a little bit tough. So Walker Russell starts with Tazi Jack and Jackson in his right pocket, rolling out right, looking right, zings it out to his man on the far sideline, and he makes the catch. That's Norman who hauls it in. His kind of outlet man gets inside the 20 and moves the sticks for another Bulldogs first down. They're just a hair off getting pressure on him to get a sack, but they're getting pressure, but he's tell you, he's manning up, standing right in there and taking it. Injury for the Bears is a man down at the 15-yard line. Looks like a Karan thrower. Injury like timeout looks like for a cramp. We'll step aside as well. Back after this on the UPike Sports Network. Hall of Fame night here in Pikeville as the Bears bring in some new members to the Hall of Fame class for the 23 season. Inducted earlier today, basketball standout Reggie Gravely and Tion Knox, bowler Brandy Hensley, golfer Will Boyd, alongside the 2013-14 men's basketball team. Always a, a big event when they bring in a new class yes. to the Hall of Fame each and year. And I know it's something Coach Corey Phipps was always big with the previous time that he spent up in Grayson of trying to get that going there. And that's something that they really are near and dear, dear and true to here in Pikeville as well. Yeah, we had a really good group. Reggie was really good back in the 80s, 90, probably 90s. And then Dion, Tion was on, uh, was took us to the, we were in the national tournament. And then that, uh, that, that the team, I mean, they was probably the best team in the country, winning thirty-one and one. That's a pretty good tournament. record. Yeah, <laughs> you know, come up against the hottest shooting team in the country that night. A nice run there for Taji Jackson. Picks up four on first down, second and six from the Bears' fourteen-yard line. Bulldogs threatening to dent the scoreboard, trailing twenty-one nothing. Russell right between the hashes. Stands in the pocket, steps up. Fires it across the middle, trying Man. to make a one-handed grab. There was Wyatt Rugerson. I thought he was going to pull that in. He was across the five, trying to get it on the fingertips, but the young man could not haul it in. It's third down six. Great job stepping up to throw that ball. He was under pressure again as the Bears. I think they've done a really good job dialing up the pressure, but he's just stepping up making plays. And you have to feel like that ball right there probably didn't find its mark because Walker Russell couldn't step up into that throw because of the pocket was right. collapsing around him. Bears have really been designing it. Just the three men up front and then sprinkling in linebackers either up the middle or off the edges. Let's see what they elect to do here on third down and six. Russell rolling out right, settles. Pressure coming, throws toward the end zone. It's incomplete. He was looking for Ruckerson again. Also in the area there was Tony Norman. Fourth down and six coming up. Mason Livingston was about to introduce himself to him. He had to get rid of that one. 
Livingston, 14 tackles, two tackles for loss, and two sacks. He had a big one in the win over Faulkner a couple of weeks ago, and looks like the Bulldogs are going to go for a field goal. That's good, good defense right there to make them go for the field goal attempt here. That's about a 30, what, 32 yarder. So Dustin Brown, the sophomore, right between the hashes. High snap, it's down, it's up, and drives that one through the uprights, and the Bulldogs find three. 42 seconds to play here in the first, 21 to three is our score. And again, Charlie, you talk about any time that you have a team that they're, they're on their kind of the hills where they are down 21 nothing. then they put together a nice sustained drive, and then all of a sudden you slam the brakes on and force them to a field goal. As a defense, you go off to the side feeling like you got to win. Oh, yeah, I think you feel you've got to win on that. Absolutely. We'll see. And it looks like we're having a discussion with the officials about something else. Coach Corey Phipps, he's got the headset hanging. That's usually not a good sign. Looks like Chris Elliott is having the conversation with our official as well, trying to decide what, the, the, what was going on with it from there. So... Don't know. I don't know. 10 plays, 60 yards, 3 minutes, 44 seconds. Bulldogs on the board. They trot it 21 to 3, 42 seconds to go here in the first quarter. So see how the Bears can do uh, again. Offense, like I say, the offense has been, been hopping tonight. Yeah, you look at uh, so far what Kirkland has been able to do. 8 of 11, 178 yards, 3 touchdowns. The 86-yarder to Derek Griffith. That's both of their longest this season. Not the longest of the career for Kirkland. He hit Diego Soto last year on a 99-yarder when they were on their own one. And I talked with Coach Phipps after the game, and I said, what was the play like? And he said, sometimes you've got all that green space in front of you. It's the best time to go for the home run ball. You've got all that room to work. And they just floated one into Diego. He caught it in stride, and to the house he went. Another pooch kick this time, and a fair catch. Called for Grant Scott right in between the 25 and 20-yard line. We'll haul that one in, and 42 seconds to play in the first, and it's been all Bears here early on, 21-3. to They lead it. You have to think after the last ball that they hit on the home run ball that you've got to try to go back to that play again. Yeah, I mean, you know, you at least set up and look like you're going to that same play, go that same formation and same everything together. And you look at the first two drives, a lot of underneath routes, a lot of, of screens and so forth, and then you go vertical on the next play right out of the gate. And maybe you caught the guys looking inside and you were able to get over top because when, when Griffith got separation at the line, he was wide open down the seam. Kirkland on first and 10. Bears pick up the blitz. They goes. go for the home run ball and was trying to find Sanders, and Sanders was looking left and needed to look right. He had him down the seam. He had gotten past Jalen Bybee, and if he catches it, it's probably six. Yep. Instead, it's second down ten. Still pushing, the, getting it out quickly. There's a... Here's Griffith who makes the catch on the bubble screen, angles back into the center of the field and moves the sticks as the eighth first down of the ball game for the Bears. They'll take it out to the 38-yard line, first down and 10. They're going to go quickly before the Bulldogs can get set. Kirkland wants to throw again on first down, slings it out to Barton near side. Barton gets a block from Step Griffith and then gets popped out of bounds. Across the 45, they'll take him... Going no, they'll take him out to just at the yeah. 44, so just shy of the 45, and clock continues to roll, and that's going to take us to the end of the first quarter. U-Pike leading Union 21-3. to Bears will have it second down and five from their own 44 when we return after this for quarter number two on the U-Pike Sports Network.
21 to 3 as we welcome you back here to Hambly Athletic Complex. Here at Howard Field, James Carter, Charlie Penson. Happy to have you along with us here tonight on the Upike Sports Network. 21 to 3. Bears leading the Bulldogs. And out on the field right now, the 2023. Hall of Fame class that was inducted earlier today being recognized here a, a, in front of a very nice crowd here tonight. Yes, it is. And those, all those men deserving, deservingly made it in there. So, as we talked about earlier, this year's Hall of Fame class, basketball standouts Reggie Gravely and Tion Knox, bowler Brandy Hensley, golfer Will Boyd, and also the 2013-14 men's basketball team. Had kids from all the way as far as Baltimore, Maryland, and Texas out, out there today. So second down and five for the Bears to start things off from their own 44. They've had four possessions, three touchdowns, working on the fourth one here with this one to see if they can add to this 21-3 lead. Lee Kirkland has been remarkable. 8 of 11, 178 through, or check that, 10 of 14, 198 through the first quarter. He'll sling this one out to Barton. He catches it in stride midfield, gets a block, tries to dance back inside, comes across the 40, down to the 39, move the sticks. Another Bears first down as that takes it down for number nine. Great blocking by the wide receivers over there to give him some room. The ball in stride, well, I think, was the best part of the play there that it allowed Barton to really get moving forward. Kirkland rifles it near side. Coming oh, nice back side, catch. DeAndre Stafford. Comes back and holds it in right in front of his bench. What a move there by Stafford. Gets down inside the 25. Tip towing down the sidelines to stay inbounds to make that catch. He had a man stride for stride with him on the near sideline, and he made a nice comebacker there. His second big catch of the ball game. On first and 10, Kirkland fires it out to the far side. A big pop there as I believe that was Barton who hauled it in. Now check that's Derek Griffith. Takes a big pop at the sticks and then falls forward and picks up a couple. Give him three, second down and seven. Twin set for Kirkland. Stacked wide left this time. Kirkland looking right, steps up in the pocket. Moves out right and dives forward. A penalty marker flies in from behind, and that's typically not a good side for the offense. Yep. He'll get down to the 15 on a gain of five, but that one's probably coming backward. We'll check in with our wide hat here in just a moment. The Bears offense already moving backward. It looks like they're going to get them for a hold. Now the question I think they're trying to decide is, from where? Get that one on Jordan Scott. Graduate student, 6'2", 306-pound offensive lineman. So make it third down and long as they'll go all the way behind the 30 now, man, at the 31-yard line. Kirkland will put three receivers left, one right. Sanders out of the backfield. They'll swing it out to Sanders, and Sanders can't haul it in. It gets off his fingertips and brings up third down. Yeah, you're kind of in that no man's land right here. That would be a 46-yard, oh, 47-yard field goal attempt. Now, Headley this year has attempted only two, missing a 28-yarder, hit a 22-yarder. It was in the win uh, over Campbellsville. They need the about the 13 and a half to move the sticks. Pocket collapsing. Kirkland steps up. Rolls out right. Mazin, man, the release is there. That's Sanders. A spin move at the 10, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Alex Sanders. 31-yard touchdown off a little backyard football play. Oh, great. Again, decision-making today has been Kirkland's uh, forte. He saw him coming. He said, go, 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 and he wide open down the sideline and hit him after he got to escape the pressure. Pocket collapses. He rolls out right, and as you said, he just motioned take off. Sanders was unaccounted for. How do you leave that guy unaccounted yeah. for on the football field? 28-3. to 
Extra point drives through and the Bears rolling here tonight. You go back to that that last play there. It's it's not so much as just the 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 awareness of Lee Kirkland as he just threw his fourth touchdown pass on four drives, but the awareness of Sanders to find himself somehow to get lost on a sideline right. and then that spin move he makes there at the 15 to get free and it's wide open space yep. in front of him. The only man between him and the goal line. As long as we've been playing football, that is pretty move right there. <laughs> Rick Bentley said that's the prettiest move he's ever seen in the time that he's been with uh, all the times of U-Pike playing football. So, Lee Kirkland, two touchdown passes coming into this this game. He's got four here tonight and four drives. And right. and this looks like, again, not to beat a dead horse to death, but this looks like the Lee Kirkland of last year. This is backyard ball right yeah. here. This is all we're looking at. And, and you, you know, you, again, you want to set the foundation for a memorable first game in the Appalachian Athletic Conference. You're doing that right here in the first half. He's making a statement. Yes. You're, you're sending teams across the, the board that you're getting ready to, to deal with. Of We're one of the teams that's going to be in the mix to put our name in for that bid to the, to the tournament at the end of the season. Kirkland, 14 of 19, 265 yards. He's om- he is over halfway home of the yard total that he had coming into this game, 581. Yep. Trying to recall this, and Rick, you're going to have to help me out on this. I think he threw for seven touchdowns last year in a game. Thank you. We'll double check that as well. But uh, he was threatening with Trevor's passing record last season. Trevor Hoskins, that is, the uh, legendary quarterback that played only three seasons here and rewrote every record in the book. I don't think his Lee's been doing really well, and he's moving up. The, I don't think that one's achievable. Yeah, there's right some now. of those that's not that's out of reach. He's just simply not going to get it. You look at at Kirkland; he's second in completions, 388 coming in, third in attempts at 672, and with his 19 completion or 19 attempts tonight, he is now second all time. Uh, his move past Sam Warren and third all time on touchdowns thrown, and uh, the. Uh, the all-time lead on that one, again, that one is uh, going to be Trevor Hoskins for a uh, probably yeah, Trev- forever. Trevor Hoskins got 2,673 passing yards is number one, 201 completions. Is this for a season or is this for – I think that's a season. Season, yeah, yeah. Just, just the season numbers. So, Tazi Jackson to start things off first and 10 from the 25 and runs into a wall of black jerseys favoring the Bears. No gain on the play, second down 10. Now that old motion, it knows it forward just shy of the 31. We'll call it a gain of a yard, second down nine. 28 to three. Bears with four possessions, four passing touchdowns for Lee Kirkland. Handoff Jackson trying to bounce it to the outside edge, and the Bears snuff that one out nicely. Coming in there was Amante Altman, the sophomore from Birmingham, the pride of Clay Chalkville High School, third down and long. Yeah, Trevor's uh, yardage for this for a career in three years is 74-14. 74-14. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's uh, 64 touchdowns. Across the 12-minute mark here. Walker Russell, third down and long. Pressure coming off the edge. Russell tries to step up, and he's going nowhere but down. The Bears get home again. That's Altman, the first man off the pile. Jacquez Russ also in pressure off the edge. And it's going to be fourth down and a very quick three and out. Yeah, it's it's pretty important. The defense is starting to come alive now. And, of course, they're putting them in a situation where they have to throw, trying to feel like they've got to throw long. And you and you can tell it's like you smell blood in the water. Yes. And you can just feel the defense is feeding off of that as they are really rolling with what the offense has been able to do here. Tight spiraling kick wobbles across the 50 and then takes a left turn and will tumble across the 46 of the Bears. And that's where they'll take it first down and 10, leading 28-3 to three here in the second quarter.
So looking at some numbers in this one through the first half so far, 11 first downs for the Bears. Total plays, 22 for 274 yards for the visiting Bulldogs, 22 plays for 87 yards. And the interesting part, u Pikes had a football for only six minutes and 38 yeah. seconds. <laughs> and they put 28 points on the board. It's like a video game right now. High snap, the take to give to Sanders. Sanders with a head of steam as he goes off right guard and grabs a couple as he'll get out to the 48, a gain of three, second, and seven. And it's something that it, they've done so well with the, the way they've been throwing the football. You got to remember about 26 out of the backfield because he slips, he slips an opening like what we saw in the last touchdown. Uh, he can go a lot in very, a very short amount of time. Yeah, I'm waiting to see the draw come out on this too. Kirkland pumps, fires it out. He's got his man wide open down the near sideline. He's looking for Ben Henson and led him just a little bit too much. It'll be third down and seven clock stopped. 10.26 to go here in the first half. Great play there. Kirkland got everybody to bite on the quick out. Henson ran past the secondary and just could not make the hookup. You know, Kirkland's form has been great today. You know, when he, even when he's trying to sell the fake and he's doing a good job of that. Pressure coming up the middle. Kirkland stands in the pocket, now rolls out right, throws it far sideline, and it's broken up. Flying in there and knocking it away. That was Paul Maxwell. He was looking for Derek Griffith. So the offense stalls out for the moment. Still at midfield at the 48 for the Bears. Fourth down and seven, and the offense staying on the field. The rolling cradle ball is a tight end. He'll go to the near side as a wing. An offense will stay out there, leading 28-3. to three. Kirkland has his crew set inside of five as he'll snap it. Steps up in the pocket, hit from behind. He's got his man across the middle looking for Braylon Barton. Cannot make the catch. It's a turnover on downs. K.J. Gene Ime. Man in coverage. And a turnover on downs gives it back to the Bulldogs. See what the Bears can do. See if the defense can keep up the pressure because, you know, of course, they had a lot of time on the sideline because they've been getting three and outs, and the offense has been moving the football. You know, that's something that on the time of possession this season, Bears have had the football on average only just under 27 minutes, and it's been a lot of that time of the defense has been stuck out on the field. Now see if they can get, a, get the offense back out there quickly after turning it over on downs. Russell rolling out, looking near side. He'll skip that one in to his receiver, but it's off the turf, incomplete. Looking for Tony Norman. That was close to being across the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he, he carried that one out there a pretty good ways. Again, all parts of your body have to be across the line of scrimmage. You can have your back foot still on the line and be everything else across and still let it fly, and it's still okay. But like you said, it was a he was flirting with that line so closely when he let that one fly, second down 10. If he held it another half second, it would have been no doubt. Russell in the ball game. Eight for 16, 66 yards. Fires it out near sideline. Norman has the grab, and he spun to the ground in front of the Bears bench. Javon Shepard, the junior, coming in, making the stop. Third down. Shepard on the tackle for the Bears. It'll be third down. Big third down right here. The Bears would love to, to turn them away again. Of course, this may be four down territory for Union here on the UPAC side of the field. Yeah, one of six on third down tries tonight. 19% on the season. They need a Bears 38-yard line to move the sticks. Bears send four. Russell gets Got hit him. and knocked down. Coming in untouched was Jay Arnold, the sophomore from Douglasville, Georgia, out of Douglas County High School. Third sack of the ball game of Walker Russell, and the Bears forced the punt. Yeah, if he was flirting with going forward on fourth down, he's not now. Jay Arnold, how do you lose that man? 6'1", 285. He was untouched when he came up the middle, and Walker Russell got every part of him. 
So now we'll see again if the punter of Hunter Fleming can pin the Bears deep. Barlin standing back on his 15. It'll take a bounce shy of the 20, tumble across the 15, and that's a good punt. That's a really good punt. They'll get it down inside the 15, down near the 13. So Barton, very smart there just to get away from that one. And it's, again, one of those plays in college and, and high school all the way through. It's You always have a keyword for it. It's poison. It's, yeah. it's danger something, and you're pointing as you're screaming, telling everybody to get away from that one because you don't want it to take that, that awkward kick and come back, make a contact with somebody on your team, and next thing you know it's a live football. Home run ball. Got plenty of room to work with it from their own 13. They'll take it, give it off to Sanders. Sanders fighting for extra position after getting met at the line of scrimmage. He'll drive the pile forward for a yard, second down nine. Eight and a half left to go here in the opening half of football. It's been all Bears thus far. Five drives, four touchdowns by Lee Kirkland. He's ready to go quick. Firing it out near sideline. He's got his man Ooh. trying to get to the ball. He was looking for DeAndre Stafford. They can't make the hookup, and they'll get it uh, third down and nine. Hey, Check tough. that. That was Hardwick. My mistake. I can't see the difference between the eight and the nine. <laughs> Stafford's got the white sleeves on tonight. I just noticed the difference between the two. There we go. That's how I'm going to have to tell the difference between the eight and the nine jersey. So rested clock at 8.16 to play here in the first half. Third down and nine for the Bears. Two for four on third down conversions this evening. So they get the illegal shift on Derek Griffith. Union will decline the penalty, take the result of the play. So make it third down and nine. So from their own 14, the Bears trying to not go three and out here. For the first time? Yeah. Kirkland stands in the pocket, escapes, rolling out right, looking for some relief. He's got his man across the near side seam as he drops it into Braylon Barton on the crossing route, shy of the 30. Move the sticks, another U-Pike first down their 12th of the ball game. Hey, right now, First again, down. he's making great decisions. He was covered up that time, able to break free. Yeah, and you just wonder, like, you see how much pressure he gets around him and, and just somehow comes out of the pile. They blitz off the edge. They'll dump it out near sideline. Sanders with a juke move, 30, 35, 40, and then is chased out of bounds in his bench. Nice run, pick up another first down. Chasing him out of bounds on the near sideline was Jamaris McClellan. So back-to-back -back first downs on back-to-back -back plays. Kirkland wants to go quick. Zings it out near side. That's Amari Hardwick. Hardwick makes the grab and is pulled out into his bench there. That's Braylon Farley. Clock resting is 7-11 to play in the half. Oh, we have a flag. Okay. I don't see it. I did, I did not see it either. So that's why I was kind of – I looked up and they're, they're talking with Derek Griffith again. You have to wonder if they got him on a motion. They got him on the last uh, series of a couple of plays ago. Now the White Hat's going to come over and have a talk with Coach Corey Phipps. You think that this is against something against Union because he's trying to decide what do you want. Do you want the penalty or the result of the play? We'll check in with our white hat and get their call here. They're ball, work, walking the ball off. So a substitution infraction against the Bulldogs. So that moves the ball across the 50 down to the Bulldogs 48. And that'll also move the sticks and a fresh set of downs for the Bears. Always take a first down when you get it. Absolutely. One of those unwritten rules like you don't take points off the yeah, board. Don't take points off the board. You don't take away a first down. So first and 10 from the 48 of the Bulldogs. Three hats across the line for Union. Showing blitz off the edge. They rush four. Setting up a screen. Ball tipped around. That one's picked off. 
at midfield. It was deflected up in the air. And coming out of there with it was number nine as Jared Simone is the man that came away. There is a penalty marker on the field. And they're going to hold on the Bears. That one's going to be declined. So the linebacker hauls in the interception. And a big turnover there after the deflected ball as Kirkland just kind of threw it into, into traffic and it got tipped around and stayed up in the air. That's the worst thing you can have there when a ball gets around a gang of people is just hanging in the air for somebody to grab it. Looks like it hit off the back of a lineman and bounced up. Yes. Yeah, they were trying to set up that wide, or that little run, running back screen play, and that's exactly what happened is it just caromed right up in the air. So good field position for Union. They'll start it at midfield near side hash mark, 6.54 to go before halftime, down 28-3. Russell rolling out, throwing left, has his man there who's hit at the 45. We'll Joe, Temp making the, Joe Temp making the stop. James Tucker on the reception. They'll take him across the 45 down to the 44. So a gain of six, second down four. Six and a half to go here before halftime. Union trying to play itself back into this one after the Bears hung a quick 28. Handoff on a sweep near side. That's Jackson. He's dragged to the ground at the 40 and a penalty marker coming. Levi Evans making the stop, but a penalty marker is probably bringing this one backward. Now it looked like a big, a big had a big forearm all the way across him, pulling him back. I think he said 64. That's Cam Mitchell, the right tackle. So that puts them behind the sticks as they'll go back across midfield to their own 46-yard line. 6.13 on arrested clock here in the second quarter. Very first, very fast first quarter, Charlie. We've kind of uh, seemed like yep. we've gotten in some quicksand here in the second. Wind the clock and put it in motion. Play clock is at 15 as the Bulldogs break the huddle. They'll start it on the far sideline on their own on their hash mark at their own 46. Rolling out right. Penalty marker flies. He'll float it out near sideline. James Tucker makes the grab. Joe Temp was the closest man in coverage. Another penalty marker. Back here at the 43, and now they're looking to the bench of the Bears. Do they want to, They want the player? They want the penalty? I think that's going to be in the area of holding. That's on the center, Hakeem Myrick. So another penalty puts the Bulldogs in reverse. So 20 yards and penalties off of back-to-back -back plays. And they were in, in the Bears' territory. Now they find themselves all the way back at their own 36. A second and about 24. Second and a prayer. Yeah. Five and a half we'll have in the first half on this snap coming up from the senior Walker Russell. Two receivers right with a wing. Blitz coming. Floats it out. He's got Jackson set up on the far side. Jackson... Bounces free, gets loose, dives across midfield. He'll get back inside the original line of scrimmage, but it's going to bring up third down and manageable. Now third down and about eight looks like here. Good read there by Russell as he saw the blitz coming and took the relief foul of Taji Jackson, the 6'2", 215-pound sophomore out of Nicholasville, played at East Jesmond High School. See what they come up with here. The defense has been playing well. That was kind of a surprise there. Yeah, we've not seen not seen them try to go with that much, but uh, really that time they just kind of pinned their ears back on second and long and came after it. They come again. They'll float it out near side and well short of his intended receiver of Tony Norman. 
Shepard was the man in the area, fourth down. He was looking for somebody in the area. He wanted to get rid of that one. Yeah, he saw the pressure coming off the edge, and he said, I'll just wing this one out, and hopefully Norman can come back. So, so Russell in the game, 11 of 18 for 91 yards. He's been sacked three times. On the other side, Lee Kirkland, 17 of 27, 296 yards, four touchdowns, and an interception. The Bears have kind of been a little bit off mark the last couple of drives. We'll see if they can get things going this next time through. A good kick there. That this will pin the Bears all the way back inside their 15 as Barton falls down after making the catch inside the 15 down around the 12. 432 left here in the first half, but that, it's been a dominant performance so far by the Bears. Let's hope they can keep it up. And, you, you know, if you're on the union side, you're sitting here thinking, we've got to get a quick three and out and get the football back. If you can go down and score, you get the football to start the second right. half. A great opportunity for a two for one. You can pull yourself right back into this one. So Kirkland will start from his own 13. On first and 10, the high snap to give to Sanders. A juke move, trying to bounce it to the outside. Gets to the seam, sticks a foot in the turf, and gets out to the 20 on a gain of seven. Second down and three. Offense gets set quickly. High snap. Kirkland pulls it, fires it out to the far sideline. Has his man there of Barton who makes the catch, but he's just going to get back to the original line of scrimmage. They'll maybe inch it forward out to the 21. It's going to be third down. I think there was one of those balls that Kirkland just needs to pull it down and yeah. get the first down. He had a lot of room in front of him. He'll set it up in a twin set now. Sanders in his right pocket. Inside of four to go in the half. 28 to three, Bears leading this one. They'll go to Sanders, Sanders can't haul yeah. it in. Broke it up on the far sideline by Camarius Bradshaw, freshman linebacker, and that's not the, not what you wanted. No, you want young. A quick three and out that takes about 30 seconds. And now you're going to have to Sticking on the foot of Joseph Sandorf, averaging 43.4 a punt this season, as long as the 59. He would like to hang one here and flip the field and not hand it to the, the visiting Bulldogs with good field position. Sandorf, a wobbly kick. Fair catch called for at the 43. That was by Wyatt Rugertson. So they'll have it at... Their own 43-yard line, 3.27 to play before halftime, a pair of timeouts remaining, and they get the football to start the second half. Not a bad punt. No. Flipped no. the field, but the most important thing was it did not allow the return right. man to get underneath it with a head of steam. Let's see if Russell tries to find something here working with Tony Norman on this near sideline. He's got man coverage working against Javon Shepard. Looking this way, brings it out into the slot. That's out to Rugerson. He's wrapped up immediately by Joe Temp at midfield. Gain of seven, second and three. Temp, the graduate out of Cottage Grove, Minnesota. I think the, think the weather there is a little different than here. A little here. different. Handoff Jackson on a sweep left following his line, trying to stretch it out there. Brent Coleman chases him out of bounds, but he'll step across the marker on the line again to move the sticks for another first down. He did a great job to the last two yards over close to the side. Let him just let him turn field and field. And he followed Trey Thompson and Michael Thomas, that left side of the offensive line on that stretch play. And the, the big running back there was very patient of letting his guys get out in front of him and find that crease. Fifth first down of the ball game for the Bulldogs. 2.41 to go here in the half. Down 28 to three, but driving. Russell wants to throw it on first down, floats it out into the slot. He's got his tight end there. That's Justin Barker who makes a nice catch at the 40, then turns downfield inside the 35 to the 34. And all of a sudden, here come the Bulldogs. Yeah, threatening a little bit now, getting it down deeper into U-Pike territory. They backed off on the blitz. Maybe they did come back with it. 
Two receivers left with Barker as a wing back, as an, a tight end. Handoff Jackson stretching out. Barker sealed the, lead, the hole, and Jackson's off to the house in the first rushing touchdown of the season. That one's coming back. The late penalty marker finally flew. There was a hold there by Justin Barker that allowed Jackson to get that hole. That one should come back. That was a big break for the Bears there. Now Jackson got to the edge there, and Justin Barker reached out and wrapped his arm around the man, and that's what opened up the hole for Jackson to slide through. So the what appeared to be a rushing touchdown of 34 yards. Third play, personal foul, illegal blindside block, offense number five, 15 yard penalty from the far the Well, even better play there that they'll get the 15 instead of the 10 from the hole. Yeah. So they got that one on Wyatt Rugertson. So moving it back to the 40. The result of the play was a first down, so they get first down and now 15. Inside of two minutes to play before halftime. Nice and job. The running back that takes the handoff there, that's Jaden Ward. He gets blown up for a loss of one. Myson Livingston in on the stop. Minute 30 left here in the first half. Bears could try to close this out without getting them on the board. We're going to need a nice lead to take into the break. And that would be uh, all our motivation to say the least on the defensive side of things. Three receivers right, one left. Russell keeps Ward in the backfield in an offset pistol. And movement off the left side. He'll dump this one off to the 40. Michael Thomas moved, but the question was, was he drawn off? Well, they didn't call and it either didn't way. They didn't so. throw it either way, so either way, a gain of one on the play makes it third down and long. So bring up down to a minute four here. It looks like we have a timeout of, on the field. Bears trying to hold on to that 25-point lead going into the break. Yeah, 64 seconds left to play here. Upike has played a very solid first half, but the last three offensive possessions have been kind of stagnant. Yeah. You look at their three drives since the, the touchdowns, turnover on downs, an interception on a deflected ball, and then a punt. Those three play or those three series, four plays three yards, six plays 39 yards on the interception, and three plays seven yards, all that totaling up fewer than three minutes. Yep. There are four possessions prior to that, four touchdowns, the longest ranging two minutes, 31 seconds. That was an eight-play, 76-yard drive in which they got the ball to Alex Sanders, who on a little backyard football play got free off the sideline and spun into the end zone. I think one thing that, that you've got to think of is what they did to start the football game and what do they have to do to get back to that offensively. Right. I think the screen game was working very well, and they may have, after hitting that home run ball, maybe feeling like that there's too much there in the home run ball. So 28 to 3, 104 left to go here in the first half. Third down and 16 for the Bulldogs. Screen setting up, trying to get it out to Jackson. They floated over top. Several black jerseys there. Jay Arnold was in the area. Also in there was Owen Bloss. So the Bears burn the timeout, 52 seconds to go. And it's fourth down and long. So now can Hunter Fleming punt it and pin it into the 10-yard line yet again? Or do they or do they go for do they go for it here? I don't think at any chance you go for it at this point. I think it's you know where you, you don't want to hand them hand them foot, the football basically with only 60 yards when you can try to pin them because they're only got they only have one timeout left after the the clock runs down off the punt. You yep. could probably burn off about 10 seconds. Now it would be a risky spot. Do you feel like that you've got fourth and 14 in your playbook? That's going to be the question. <laughs> I mean, that's going to be a decision for him to make yeah. on that side. John Luttrell over there. I'm does, like you. I wouldn't do it. But does John know. Luttrell have fourth and 14 in the playbook? 
Now, you have to feel like that with Walker Russell, he's he's evasive enough to where he could probably piece something together if they get the opportunity on the other side. Can the front five of that Bulldogs line hold up on a blitz if the if the Bulldogs look at a big blitz coming from the Bears? And if it's reversed and it's Corey Phipps making that decision, he might do it. Yes. Oh, I would expect a blitz coming here if they try to go for it. They're not going to. They're going to bring out Hunter Fleming and see if they can pin them deep. So Braylon Barton will march back. He'll stand at his 10. Now Fleming will try to go for the coffin corner and pin it inside the five if he can. Good kick, end over end kick. But it takes a Union or a U-Pike bounce and tumbles into the end zone for the touchback. Good break for the Bears there. Absolutely. He, that was a perfect ball, though, off the punter's foot. I understand you right. You say he's Australian. You know, the soccer guy, I'm sure he knows a little bit about kicking a ball. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. He, he looked like he was a professional on that one. That was uh, had the perfect spin and everything, just got the wrong bounce when it caught the turf. That's always the thing about turf because, you know, it, it, with the football, never, we you know, just never, never know where it's way. going to go. So at the 20, 44 seconds of one timeout left. Let's see what the offense tries to do here. Up 28 to 3 before halftime. Kirkland zings it out near sideline. It's DeAndre Stafford. Zigs and zags, and in his race out of bounds at the 25. Clock will rest 37 seconds to go in the half. First out of bounds, number 57, Hammett. And actually, I'm going to say he stepped down at the 24, so gain of four on the play, second and six. More importantly, though, that clock has stopped for the Bears. Kirkland pumps, steps up, fires a rocket across the middle. He's got his man there of Derek Griffith out at the 45. They'll stop the clock to spot the football. They'll put him at the 44. And then as soon as they set the markers, they'll wind the clock. 30 seconds to go. Kirkland trying to march his team down the field, looking for more points. A low throw picked off the turf again by Derek Griffith. Move the sticks back-to-back -back first down from the graduate out of Sacramento. Down inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. 23 seconds and a timeout left for the Bears. Kirkland wants to throw on first down, stands in the pocket, all kinds of time, lets it fly. He's got his man oh, in the nice seam at the five-yard line who runs under it and holds it in. First down what and goal. Catch. Three consecutive strikes to Derek Griffith, and the Bears have it first and goal with 13 seconds to go, and Corey Phipps says, I'll take my time out now. Yeah, give him a breather. <laughs> There's some oxygen out there for him. I mean, they were moving it down the field. Three plays, they go 77 yards, and it's first and goal from the three. Lee Kirkland's over 300 in the first half. Well, you got a lot of options here. You got a couple, maybe run two plays. You can run, you can run one right now. 22 of 33, 374 yards, and four touchdowns. Looking for number five here. We're going to have to do some record book reading at the halftime because there's, so, there's yeah. some numbers that, that may be coming to an end here by Lee Kirkland. This was uh, the best game I've seen him play since last season. So first and goal, they'll put him at the five. Stafford goes in motion. Kirkland wanting to throw on first down. He's got his man wide, wide open, open on the far sideline. That's DeAndre Stafford, his second touchdown of the ball game. And the Bears march it right down the field and add to their lead 34 to 3 here before halftime. Nine seconds and change left. That was well executed. And again, you saw a, an offense there. There was no huddle. It was give me the football, let's go. And that's what they did on those four drives. They didn't slow things down. They just kept Union guessing and just down the field they march it. Beautiful drive there by Lee Kirkland. His fifth passing touchdown of the half. Extra point splits the uprights, 35-3, to three, nine seconds to play in the half. You, you had about 44 seconds when you took the football back. You only needed 30 of it. Yep. Beautiful drive that time. And like I say, right into the teeth of that defense, too. You go back through the 
If I'm the, find the uh, screen here that I'm looking for, as Lee Kirkland again is just kind of been uh, really, really solid. You look in the middle of his progression, he's thrown 34 passes here in the first half, five touchdowns with an interception. He had gone very clean and only had three or four incompletions for 17 passes. Then he had five of his next six. From that mark, from passes 24 through 34, two incompletions, one of those that in interception on the deflected ball. Right. So now 377 through the air, 396 total. It's been an air raid attack for this Bears team in the first half, and it's 35-3 to three with nine seconds to play in the half. So Austin Shuffler. I don't mean to run salt in the wounds right here, but there you try it onside kick <laughs> and try to recover. <laughs> Say Shuffler will boom this one deep. And yeah, I think so. A little squib kick here. Tumbles down to the 11. Scooped up and a big hit. Ball may have come loose at the end. The Bears think they have it. What a big yeah. pop there by Tiernan and Barry. The senior out of Cabell Midland High School in Ona. White Hat yep. says, though, the ball stays with the Bulldogs. So what do you do with your bull? Do you take a knee? You I go take a knee and go to the locker room. Don't take any chances here of, of doing something else that could turn sideways. 35 to 3 with five seconds to go. And it has been a well-oiled machine for this Bears offense here in the first half. Stay tuned with us at the half. We'll check scores and stats from other games around the conference. All the stats in this one. Of course, the marching band's performance at halftime. We'll have it right here on the UPAC Sports Network. Russell gives it off to Jackson. Jackson following his lead blocker right up the near side seam. Gets popped off his feet after crossing the 35, and we're at the half. 35-3, to three, Bears leading here on Hall of Fame night in Pikeville. Halftime show after this on the UPike Sports Network. Halftime here at Hambly. UPike leading Union 35 to 3. Let's check scores from around NAIA today of other games that have gone final or currently in action. Point defeats KCU today 35 0. KCU will be the next home game for the Bears after the road trip next week to Reinhardt. That'll be Hall of Homecoming week for the Bears. Uh, we'll have that game here on a 7 o'clock kickoff here on the UPike Sports Network. Other games around the area, St. Thomas beats Weber International 41 to 16. Scroll down the list here. Faulkner falls to Lindsey Wilson 49-21. You're talking about a team that's just a, an absolute program, Lindsey Wilson. They just continue to win, 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 uh, whatever they do, but uh, a big win over Faulkner there tonight. Other games currently underway. Bluefield leading St. Andrews at the half 28 to 6. Bethel, Tennessee in front of Cumberland's 13 to 3 after the first half of play. Campbellsville leading Cumberland 13 to 9. And that rounds out the games in NAIA. In college football top 25 action today. Number six, Penn State over Northwestern 41-13. USC holds off Colorado as the eighth ranked Trojans win at 48-41. Kentucky. With a win over number 22, Florida today down at Kroger Field, 33-14. to 14. Ray Davis, 26 carries, 280 yards, three touchdowns. That guy is a dude as they took care of the Gators and took the bite out of them before sending them back to the swamp. Georgia hangs on from the upside-minded, unranked Auburn Tigers. The defending national champs win at 27-20 on the road. Number two, Michigan over Nebraska, 45 to seven. It was number three, Kansas over, or number three, Texas over 24th ranked Kansas, 40 to 14. Number 23, Missouri knocks off Vanderbilt, 38 21. Last night, it was number 19, Oregon State knocking off number 10, Utah, 21 to seven. Game's currently underway. Going to the fourth, it's a shootout down in 
Mississippi is number 13 LSU leading Ole Miss 42 to 40. Number nine Oregon at Stanford leading 28 to six midway through the third. 14th ranked Oklahoma 33 to 20 over Iowa State. Number 11 Notre Dame leading Duke 10 nothing midway through the first half. And it's number 21 Tennessee leading South Carolina 17 to 10 midway through the second quarter of that one. Pretty good day of football. Absolutely, some uh, some good football games. Still some good games coming up later tonight as Alabama is at Mississippi State. That game kicks off at 9 o'clock. Number 7, Washington at Arizona. And number 25, Fresno State entertains Nevada. Some West Coast football. By the time I get back to the hotel tonight, I have some football to watch yep, late. that's right. <laughs> we might be late getting out here tonight. Yeah, I think so. So the Bulldogs will get the football to start the second half. As Austin Shuffler has it teed up near sideline, 35-yard line, working right to left as we view it here at Hilliard Howard Field. And a little kick to the far on side. Onside, and they and got it. kick, and they recover it. Flag. I don't know that he got that. It, they've got a penalty marker back at the 38. And you have to wonder, did he get a head start? Maybe. He was untouched. It was Dasani Tate that was on the recovery. So let us wait to see what the officials. Kicking team, number three, five yard penalty. So the re-kick the, after the penalty, they called it on Barton. Yep. Barton. He was on this near side. It was Dasani Tate was the man that was off sides. As soon as he did, he turned and looked at the side and goes, I was over here. What did I do wrong? <laughs> so they'll back it up now to the 30. And Mr. Shuffler, well executed, though. Yeah, he was. They got kicked it right over top of the man out on the far side of the numbers. And the Sonny Tate caught it out of the air. It, it traveled 10 yards. I mean, it was a legal kick. Yeah, it was a legal kick. You're right. But, uh, again, Tate just maybe a little bit of a – Head start. So Shuffler backs up on this one, looks to swing it deep. And an opportunity for Union to have their first kickoff return of the night as Shuffler's put every other kickoff deep in the end zone. He gets a good one here, That's hanging nice this one, one back at the 10. Yep. Near side 15, 20, and then wrestle to the ground at the 25 yard line. That was Imey. So at the 25-yard line for the Bulldogs, same uh, result if you put it in the end zone. Yep, exactly. I mean, you don't. The only thing is, it ruined his no return record on the day. So down 35 to three, and let's see what Walker Russell and his crew can do. Russell, 15 of 23, 112 yards in the first half. But the Bulldogs' defense, or the Bears' defense, excuse me, very stout really taking and picking and choosing the way they wanted to dial up the blitzes, and they've kept Walker on the move for much of the first half. He wants to throw on first down, slings it out to the far sideline. That ball was tipped and nearly picked off. Joe yep. Temp was right there. Also was Timothy Butler. Went off of Quinn Carter. And if Temp could have run underneath that one, that one was six. Oh, no doubt. That's, a, that's one of those uh, – Momentum's home yeah, run balls yeah, right out of the that game. Would, that would have just about took care of it. So it passes in complete, second down 10. Russell on the near side, three receivers left, one right. The take to give to Jackson right up the gut. No he runs into the arms of Landon Hammock, the red shirt freshman from Pikeville. They give him a gain of one, third and nine. You talk. You give the credit to the front three, and you've got six guys that you can talk about because they run people in and out so well of, of mixing stuff up. They've actually moved Trayvon Barnett up there on that outside edge as well. So kind of seven of the of the front three that has been in a mix and match, and they've done a really good job setting the, at the point uh, of and contact. And it gives them a lot of rest, keeps them fresh too. So 39. Russell in the same set. Pressure coming up the middle. Russell steps up, wants to run, pulls it back down, and then gets hammered at the 35-yard line. 
That's Chucky Moore that makes the stop to Sophomore from Alabama. Out to the 31, fourth down. And they're bringing the punting unit in again. Good start there for the defense. Force a three and out. It's the way you want to start the second half after you know, the way you played in the first half. And you go back and you look at the, the drives for Union. Punt, punt, a field goal. Three punts into the half, and then a punt here to start the second half. So Fleming, high kick. Fair catch by Barton inside the 40. So the Bears will have it first and 10, 13 26 to go here in the third quarter. We'll start at their own 37. See, they just come out slinging the ball again. I would uh, not be shocked. I, would, I, would, no. I, would, I should say I would be shocked if they did anything besides that. Right. Kirkland, 23 of 34 in the first half, 377 yards, five touchdowns and interception. One touchdown shy of tying the school record for most in a game of six. He wants to start on first and 10 with a handoff to Sanders and the little engine that could st sticks his head right in the hole and then gets stopped after getting out to the 40 on a gain of three. And you look at Sanders, 5'8", 170 pounds, and he is just all brute force yes, when he, he hits is. the hole. Got that explosion. And you could tell the couple of games that he missed due to the injury, the, the offense just looked out of sync. Kirkland wants to throw on second down. Zips it into double coverage through the midst of Barton, incomplete third and nine. You know, one player that's still missing from the offense, they expect him back next week is Diego Soto, another prolific playmaker right. that they can go with him out of the backfield and run that swing route that we've seen several times with Sanders, but uh, be certain to be good to get him back next week when they go to Reinhardt. Yeah, they, they need that extra weapon. He's a guy that can stretch the field. He can move all over the field inside out. Blitz coming off the edge. Kirkland sees it, stands in the pocket, fires it across the middle. First down. And hits Ben Henson out at midfield and moves the sticks for another U-Pike first down. I tell you, they, they've just been methodicals here today. 19th first down of the ball game. Right at midfield across the Pikeville High School. P at 12 and a half to go in the third. Kirkland on first down, slings it. He's got his man wide open of Barton in the near side seat. Nice job. Makes it's a six. cut center of the field, sprinting toward oh. the end zone, and then gets swept off his feet inside the 10. It's first and goal. I think if he'd have went for the pylon, he'd have scored. Yeah. Keith, I think he was looking for contact. He, he was maybe looking for it there, but what a great ball there by Kirkland. So down to the eight-yard line, 12 minutes to go here in the third. And Kirkland looking for number six. He's going to throw it. Slings it far side, looking for the back shoulder fade, and it falls incomplete. He was going for Derek Griffith. Second down and goal. You know, they, they've just been all throttle here today. They haven't slowed down a bit. And Griffith, 180 yards in the first half on seven catches. He had 132 yards altogether coming into the game. Seven catches for 37 two weeks ago in the win over Faulkner. Swing pass out to Sanders. Sanders a little tiptoe, finds his seam, lowers the shoulder, gets inside the five, and is driven out of the bounds, shy of the goal line, down inside the five to the three. So it'll be third and goal from the three. See if they give Sanders a chance to try to run it in here. We're bringing a pair of tight ends here, so Cradle Ball and Grant Scott will attach each side. Two receivers go right. Sanders in the right hip pocket of Kirkland on third and goal. Sanders rolling out right, looking back left, wide open, looking for his tight end who pulls oh. it in and drops it at the end. Gee. He had Grant Scott. It was on his fingertips, and the freshman from Pikeville can't haul it in. Fourth down. Beautiful play, yes. set it up. Everybody looking right. They came back across from Grant. And they're going to go with a field goal. So Joseph Sandorf will come out and do the holding for Jake Hadley, trying to hit only a second field goal in three tries this season. 
So from the 10 near side hash mark with a full moon hanging over top. High snap, kick is down. Ball drives through the uprights and is good. And make it 38 to three with 11.07 to play here in the third. Back after this on the UPike Sports Network. Thirty-eight to three, eleven oh seven to go here in the third, and a twenty-yard field goal attempt from Jake Headley, his second of the season. And the Bears elect to take the points to open up the second half. Kirkland over four hundred yards now, four thirty-four on the night, five touchdowns, twenty-six of forty. Driving kick. Fielded at the three. Across the 15, the 20, near side 25, slips a tackle and then hit from behind. <laughs> Biggest return of the night for and Noah Steen on the return. Check that, my mistake, that's Damari Owens. I couldn't see the number one beside the seven there. So good return out to, I'm gonna put it to 34 yard line. 10.58 to play here in the third. It's been all you pike from the word go. Now, they're, they're racking up some numbers here tonight. Defense trying to hold on to that to keep them off the touchdown scoreboard. And you look at the numbers right now, total plays 37 for Union for 135, 40 for 396 for you pike. So Russell on first down and 10, trips left, one right. Three hats across the line. They drop eight in protection. Russell rolling out, looking right, gets a block, floats it across the middle. He has his man there of Tony Norman on the near side seam, who hauls it in and moves the stick for the ninth first down of the evening for the Bulldogs. Had a lot of time in the backfield that way. Came kind of wait for somebody to come back to him to help him. And a good job there by the Bulldogs. Usually you see a play that stays that long in the backfield, a hold gets thrown yeah. somewhere. They get a really good job of not allowing that to happen. Jackson off in is Jaden Ward. He'll go in the right pocket of Russell on first down and 10 from the 48. The take, the give, the ward starts left, comes back up the gut. Landon Hammock stick, stick, sticks his arms out and grabs him down after a nice gain as he'll get down inside of Bears territory to the 47 yard line. Gain a five second and five. 10 minutes to play here, third quarter. It's been all U-Pike from the word go. Scored on their first four possessions on four passing touchdowns from Lee Kirkland. He has five in the ball game. Second and five, Russell wants to throw. Pressure coming off the edge, and are they going to get home? And they're yep. going to. Russell tried to get free. Landon Hammock Russell. in there with Jacquez Russ. Nine, get it back at the 46 of the Bulldogs, fourth sack of the contest. And makes it third down and long as they'll get it behind the sticks, make it third and 12. Myson Livingston also in on the, the stop there. Russell tried to step up, and when he did, he stepped right into the grasp of the defense. Screen coming near sideline. That one's picked off. Right in front of the Bears bench. As that's Obi Wilson. His first interception of the season, only the second of the year. And the Bears will take over on 
the Bulldogs side of the 50 at the 49-yard line with 9.05 to play here in the third. Everything going the Bears' way here tonight. Obi Wilson, kind of a, a quiet season. He, he draws usually the, one of the best receivers on the field, and that's why he doesn't see a lot of targets his way. But there that time is able to fly up underneath it and take it away. Play action, Kirkland. Pressure coming off the edge. Floats it down the center. He's got his man there in coverage. It was Derek Griffith he was looking for. Passes incomplete. Griffith looking for the penalty marker. None flies. Kike McMurray in coverage downfield. Second down, 10. So you go with a vertical pass there. You come out probably swing on this one. Yeah, I would think so. Little seesaw battle back and forth as you kind of lull your opponent to sleep. They line up, want to go quickly. They'll bring it out near sideline. That's Dasani Tate uh, er, that makes the catch. Angles back into the middle of the field and gets down to the 40-yard line. Just inch it across the 40, shy of the marker to gain, so it'll be third down and inches. Need the 39. They just have the football sitting across the 40, but shy of the 39-yard line. Eight and a half to go on this snap. Two tight ends set now as Kirkland's going to go up under center. Kirkland's going to throw, looking back shoulder fade, far sideline, trying to get it to Derek Griffith. And it's incomplete. It's fourth down. A little uh, trickery there. Yeah. Run but, everybody up thinking for the for the uh, the sneak and then try to throw the home run ball on the far sideline. And now they move the football up to the 39. Now the officials going to move it back. So you can't put it there. That's first down. <laughs> Now we'll see if they go back under center and let the. I think they gained an inch. Six foot six, 255 pound quarterback. Now the officials are going to uh, switch, switch out the balls. Yeah, footballs. See where he puts it back at. They had the, uh, the wrong football on the far sideline. So now they move it back. Now they <laughs> put it where it, it back belongs. On, yeah, yeah. Where, where it originally was supposed to go. <laughs> Kirkland's going to climb up under center this time. And he'll lower the shoulder and push the pile forward. And that should move the sticks oh, for the. Another first down for the Bears. Would be number 21 in the ball game. A little un uncover the pile. Where's on where he lays the football down at? I may bring the chains in. Yeah, nose of the football is at the 39, and looking across, that should move the sticks. They're going to do an official measurement, though. On fourth down and inches, I think you have to. Looking at the distance to gain marker across the way, this ball's short. Maybe, yeah. It's short about two, about two chain lengths. So we'll see with our first official measurement of the night. If they got it, it's by a chain link. I, I, by the spot of the football on the field, though, I think they're short. And it looked like that Kirkland got a really good push up the I middle. I thought he did. Again, the conference opener in the new conference for the Bears, and this isn't even close. Yeah, it's a football short. So a fourth down stop by the Bulldogs. Gives him a little bit of life now. Corey Phipps is absolutely... Laying some lumber toward the official. I don't think he was happy with the spot of the football. He's got his red hanky out. That's the challenge flag. He'll stick it back in his back pocket and hang on to it, but uh, I can see his forehead from here. It's blazing red. So the turnover on downs gives it back to the Bulldogs. They'll take over on their own 39-yard line. 8-13 to play here in the third, down 35. It's hard to tell where they sit those back on that back so far on the track. They don't sit them right up on the line anymore. And now the penalty, or the hanky, has been tossed. That was a uh, Bill Belichick anger throw as he tossed that one from the 40. He got it all the way across midfield. That was a good 13 yards on the throw. Coach Phipps is going to go with his second challenge of the season. So, again, something that was added to this season, the ability to challenge plays. We saw the last time here against Faulkner, two challenges. 
uh, in, what, about three plays. Yeah. Upike challenged one, lost it, and then Faulkner two plays later challenged one and won it. So we'll uh, – so we have a tent that's set up that's down at the end of the U-Pike bench that they go under. They've got a monitor they can check. So the two officials go in there. They kind of watch the replay to see what is there and what's available. But I saw Coach Phipps looking at the official, and he was holding his hands out like this, saying that was, that was good by that much at least. So, again, after – and the way the replay works is you have to have irrefutable – evidence that the call on the field can be overturned right. that's that's the that's cool. the biggest thing it has to be irrefutable evidence that it's different than what the call on the field was called yeah i thought he had a pretty good surge i don't yeah i don't know i mean you, know, you have to look back at that then you got to remember where he's where's he got the ball and yeah you, i mean you think about it you take I, you probably had 20 people that was right there in the mix i think there was only one guy wide each way so i don't think they'll overturn it I mean, they would have to see something different on the replay. As Coach Phipps is making his walk down toward the sideline. He can only go to the 25. That's as far as he can go. Now, against Faulkner, we had a couple of fans from Faulkner that was down there on the rail next to the the scores or the uh, replay tent. You could see what was happening before they called it because they were already cheering her down. So they're taking a long look at this. And you have to think, you know, if, if you're taking a long look at it, you might see something you didn't see when it first happened. You're right. I mean, you know. Again, if you, if you felt like when you went back to the replay and you saw immediately there was nothing there that you didn't see in the original play, you would yeah. probably say, we're good, let's go. They've been under the tent there for about 90 seconds. And they're still looking. May not walk, walk past Corey, though. No. <laughs> they're, they're waiting for him to move away. Yeah, he's he's yeah. moving back down so toward the 50. Now the they can field. take the angle across the field. So, so 8.13 to go here in the third. It's been all you, Pike. Lee Kirkland having a record night. So here they come out of the tent. Let's see what we've got. The Whitehead is taking that angle. Call All right, so the call on the field stands. So first down at Union. And, Charlie, I think you and I, we both agreed that there was probably very little chance that was going to yeah, get overturned right. either way. And the good thing, at least I will say, is that, that the football has been placed back on the field where the play was stopped, where they right. measured. Sometimes you'll see it. They'll pick it up and they'll move it on the other side of the, of the marker. <laughs> And then it's like, well, if the ball was really there, that was a first down. So either way, turnover on downs gives it back to the Bulldogs down 38-3. to Here's the take to give to Jackson. He'll bounce it out to the left side, trying to get the angle. Gets a nice block off the edge and a nice run down the far sideline into Bears territory. Joe Temp had an angle on him, and he got crackbacked, and that allowed Jackson to get free down to the 40-yard line. So, Temp on the stop. But a hefty run there by Taji Jackson. So, first down and 10 they for the They haven't had many of those tonight. No. Russell wants to throw. Looking left. Floats this one toward the far sideline. That one's out of bounds. An offensive lineman standing on the sideline makes the catch. Second down, 10. You think about the, the Bulldogs, they've gone, now this is their fifth game, still without a rushing touchdown. They had one earlier, but it was called back to a crack side, crack side, crack back block, excuse me, on a blind side block. That also had a, a hold in there as well. But uh, either way, that's you could tell their bread and butter tonight has been, let's, uh, let's uh, throw the football. And now we've got everybody but the center. Hakeem Myrick never snapped the football. Who moved first? Everybody but the center. Yeah. It's almost like who's on first. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it's never a good sign when your center turns around and he still has the football in his hand. Come on, everybody. Yeah, that, that was a hard one to sell. 
So back it up five, make it second and 15 from the far side hash mark for Russell. The take to give to tailback Ward. He'll go right up the gut. He gets that five back. Get it just shy of the 40, so it's going to be third down and long. Yeah. Um, Amante Altman, sophomore from Birmingham, making the stop. Two receivers right, one left with a wing. Play action, ball tipped in the air, and that one's picked off. He got a line of blockers. That's OB Will, oh. check that. Deej Savage that makes the pick, the second interception of the ball game, and Savage, a sophomore from Las Vegas, Nevada, turns it over and gives it back to the Bears. I got to see it. So we gambled on that one. <laughs> Too easy, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> So, so right. Savage with the interception. The Bears will take over on their own 39. Let's see if Kirkland goes for a home run ball here. Bulldogs showing blitz. Here they come. Picked up nicely. They'll sling it near sideline. Stafford comes back in, makes the catch. Still fighting for position and makes a heck of a play there after getting forced out of bounds, reestablishing position, and then hauling it in right in front of the Bears bench. He was reaching for that uh, marker to throw that down Is coming back in. Yeah, I don't know that they're going to put this one in. I think they're going to say he had stepped out of bounds and came back in illegally. He had stepped out around the 35-yard line. There's a penalty marker on the field right here. This is going to be illegal touching. Now, the question is, was he forced out? So... If he's forced out, immediately reestablishes, and then catch, catches, it's okay. And he's saying move the ball. He and I will give him credit. The official was standing there looking right down the yes. line and paying attention. So Now, he, he had one foot that went out. The other foot was in. But he, as soon as the foot went out, he immediately had both feet in back in possession of the field before he made catch on the catch. So uh, kind of the, the way the work, wording is there, again, you, if you're forced out, you have to immediately reestablish before you come back in to touch the football. Tyrese Christensen in the backfield now. Kirkland wants to throw. Rifles this one across to Stafford. He feeds him at the 25. He's tripped up just shy of the 20. That'll move the sticks for another Bears first down. Paul Maxwell on the stop for the Bulldogs. You got to notice with Kirkland tonight, when he's got a guy that's got the hot hand, he feeds him. Yeah, he does. You know, Derek Griffith had some big catches. Now he's got DeAndre Stafford who's been feeding him on this drive. Kirkland wants to throw, looking left. Rifles this one across the far side seam. He's got Derek Griffith that makes the catch at the five. Sheds the tackle and gets in the end zone for six. A 21-yard pitch and catch. And... Mr. Lee Kirkland has written his name in the record books. That ties the record for most touchdowns in a game at six with Trevor Hoskins and Xavier Malone, 44-3 with 5.51 to go in the third. May see him get a chance to put seven up there. And that is the double check here. I believe that is the third touchdown tonight for Mr. Griffith. No, that's his second as well. He had one earlier. Extra point is true. 45 to three, 551 to play in the third. Back up to this on the U-Pike Sports Network. Griffith, now the all-time leader for most 
receiving yards in a game. He's over the 200 mark. Eight catches for 201, two touchdowns. Three players tonight with the duo of touchdowns, Griffith, Sanders, and Stafford. And the Bears lead this one 45-3. Lee Kirkland has tied the school record with six. He is now over the 500-yard mark for the second time in his career, chasing down his career high of 579. And could he take his eyes at the all-time passing record by a young man that has uh, kind of had so many big numbers in this uh, program of Trevor Hoskins? It's going to be interesting to see. You know, I've seen Trevor throw it all over the field, too. 607 yards is the school record. Kirkland is a 103 away from that. We've got 544 left to play in the third. An injury timeout for a down player by the Bulldogs. But you look at Derek Griffith tonight, the, the graduate student. He has kind of paid his dues through the time here at U-Pike and seven catches for 37 in the win over Faulkner two weeks ago. Came into the contest with 18 catches, 132 yards. Eight balls for 201 tonight, his second touchdown there as he really fought for the extra yardage and gets in for the 21-yard score. You know, great, great performance by a lot of, a lot of the Bears. I mean, we're going to be talking about a lot of them at the end of the ballgame. Yeah, without a doubt. It's uh, it's kind of one of those nights that it's it's been Lee Kirkland has been, from the word go, starting to rewrite a lot of pieces in the record book He's six completions away from uh, tying Trevor Hoskins for completions in a game, 10 away from attempts. That was by Xavier Malone last year against Lindsey Wilson. But he has been efficient in just about every single yes, pass he that has. he's thrown tonight. He's done a great job. I mean, you know, decision-making's been on point. So after the injury is all cleaned up, we've still got laundry on the field after the kickoff. So... The injured player was Damari Owens, sophomore out of Louisville. He's being attended to and helped to the Bulldogs sideline. Turns and gives a thumbs up to his buddies, and he is very slowly going to the sideline. That's never a good sign. So why didn't you sit and talk about that penalty during that break and during make the money? Holy. And then to make things even worse against the Bulldogs. Yeah. Uh, they had, a, had plenty of time there to discuss it, but. Uh, so they're going to double whammy on the Bulldogs. So a hold and then a, a personal foul for unsportsmanlike conduct. So they'll start the football with a shadow of their own goal line on their back at their own six. And this is, I think, where you, as a defense, you pin your ears back and say, yep, here we come. Yep, yep. But this is where Walker Russell is dangerous as well because he's got a lot of green space out in front of him. If he can get with some air underneath it, you got a chance for a one-on-one -on -one battle. He's slippery too. Absolutely. Two high safeties for the Bears on first down and 10. Play action, Russell. Fires it to the far sideline on a quick little bubble screen. He's got his man there that makes the catch. That's Quinn Carter. He's wrestled out of bounds on the far sideline by Lee Evans. Levi Evans, excuse me. Enough for a first down. The correction, that was Isaiah Johnson. I saw the, the zero and looked like it was an eight on the turn back. So Johnson, the senior out of Oak Ridge, Tennessee, making the grab. So move the sticks for a first down. Handoff to Ward, up the gut, across the 20 to the 21, a gain of two. A lot of field in front of them here, so they, can, they, they got a lot of options to move the football. The big thing was is that that first play there, you get away from your own goal line. Yeah. And that was I think that was really big. That was a really good throw there by Walker Russell as well, just to give yourself a little breathing room to get off of when you're stuck there inside the six. Ward stays in the left pocket. Three receivers right, one left. Russell looking right. Zips it out near sideline as Norman makes the grab. It doesn't haul it in through the catch. It's knocked loose as the ball 
was sprung free. It was, I believe, Javon Shepard that made the big hit, and then he came to the sideline immediately. So third down and eight. Clock resting, 4.28 to go here in the third. Three receivers right, one left again. Ward stays in the backfield with Russell. Three hats across the line. They bring the blitz off the edge. Russell steps up, rolling right, fires it across the middle, has his man there. Chris Thomas sheds a tackle, now gets to the far sideline, spins and gets out near the 45. Twelfth first down of the ball game for the visiting Bulldogs. And that'll get them up near midfield to their own 44-yard line. Four minutes to go here in the third. That was a really good pass there. Finding Chris Thomas on that drag route across the middle. Again, able to step up out of the rush and get, find an open receiver. Handoff Ward. Into the middle he goes and then is driven to the ground from that spot. Gain of two on the play. Second down and eight. Three thirty-four to play here in the third. Forty-five to three. Upike with the big lead. Four touchdowns on their first four drives. Lee Kirkland having a record night. We've still got a lot of football to left to go in this one. Russell steps up. Pressure coming from behind. He'll get out to midfield. Make it third down and about a call it a long four, if you will. Make it actually five now. They're moving back to the 49-yard line. One of 12 tonight are the Bulldogs on third down conversion. 19% on the season. They were 11 of 57 coming in. Pressure coming off the edge. Walker floats it near sideline and throws a wounded duck into the Bears' sideline. So we're up a fourth down. One of 13 on third down yeah. conversions tonight. I think there's. I don't care what uh, I don't care what level of football you're in. That is a recipe for disaster yeah. every single night. 49 yeah. plays. That was the 50th snap. Check that. 53 now. Just refreshed. 53 plays for 219 yards on the other side. Upike 54 for 526. And you've got 526 yards and 504 of it's through the air. Yeah. So Fleming for another kick. End over end kick that goes into a saucer like spin. And they're going to get a great bounce and roll off of this one down inside the five. And it'll come to rest at the three. So Hunter Fleming, a remarkable job here tonight on the punting duties. And what wasn't even on the roster. Wasn't even on the yeah. roster coming into tonight. An Australian. And you can tell that young man, he's, he's very comfortable with the football on his foot. So now the Bears will face... First down from their own three as Kirkland will stand in his own end zone. Will he throw? Well, they did this last year, and Diego Soto went 99 yards. Kirkland wants to throw. Pumps, fires. He's got his man there on the far sideline, as that is Ben Henson on the crosser. Enough for a first down. Picks up about 12. 24th first down of the ball game. Across the 15, out to the 17. Bears line up, want to go quick. Twin set, far side hash mark for Kirkland. Pumps, has his man in the seam. That's Barton who makes the catch at the 35 and spins forward and gets down to, out to the 40 yard line. Back to back first downs, number 25 in the ball game. Barton was uncovered. Yeah, he, he was wide open. Just a pat. Pitch and catch. Kirkland swings this one out to Sanders in the flat, puts his shoulder down. Check that. That's Adrian Madeco. 
as he checks into the ball game for his first action tonight. Give him about six yards on the carry. Take him out to the 46 of the Bears. They need midfield to move the sticks. We've got just over one minute to play in the third. 45 to three, Bears lead this one. Kirkland, pocket collapses, rifles this one over to the far sideline and makes the hook up again. That was out to Ben Henson and another first down, 26 in the contest now. You give a shout out to that offensive line tonight. They have given him plenty of time back there. He's been able to, and when, and when they did get him, they would push it out and give him a chance to step up. 100%. It looks like he's playing on a seven on seven right now. He's throwing on air most of the night. He had been protected, just paying pitch and catch as Henson grabs this one, takes it down inside the 20. Ball comes out at the end. Was he down? Officials do, will say that he was down by contact. So move the sticks, take it down. They're going to put it at the 22, so down to the just outside of the orange zone. And I believe a timeout has been requested by Union. Now we got a challenge flag on the far side. That's what it is. So Union's okay. going to challenge the, the ruling of the fumble on the back end of this. So well. Yeah. So here's here's what we've got. If you're just joining us, it's uh it's been Union kind of chasing UPIC all over the field. And it has been the Lee Kirkland show here tonight. I'm not going to like running that far across the field to check that monitor either. Now, first play, it was uh, six, six plays, 65 yards, 7 nothing. Early first quarter, they needed a minute 46 to punch it in. Ten minutes, two seconds left to go. Kirkland hits DeAndre Stafford for six yards out, 14 nothing. They add another one to end the first as Kirkland gets Derek Griffith for 86 yards, 21-0 after that one. Union gets a field goal from 32 yards out, 21-3 after one quarter of play. Kirkland goes back to the air, catches Alex Sanders from 31 yards out, 13-11 before halftime, 28-3. Kirkland goes to Stafford for the second time in the ball game, five yards out, 35-3. Jacob Hadley puts through a 20-yard field goal, making it 38-3. And Kirkland delivers his sixth touchdown of the night. Derek Griffith holding in his second, 21 yards out, 551 to play here in the third, 45 to three. That's where we currently stand with 27 seconds to go in the period. So you have 35 completions right now on the night. Is that what you told me? Uh, let me double check here. I let's, think that's right. I think he's one short of tying Trevor Hoskins. Let's see this. Get a refresh here on the screen. He was at 30, yeah, 35 of 51 so, now. So he's one short, one of, short of the completions. And yeah, that was a Faulkner. That was a night that was uh, was amazing to watch, like much like we're seeing tonight, yes. obviously. Five attempts away from Xavier Malone's attempts record. Yeah, we, yeah, we, it was that, it was a shootout that night. That was a basketball score yes. when we got back home. Yes, a hundred percent. So the officials have emerged from the tent. Do we get a replay of what we had two weeks ago? Back-to-back -back challenges. So the call on the field stands. So both head coaches burned their challenge flag here in the third. Both lose their challenge flags. So, again, you get one challenge. If you're successful, you get a second. After that, that's it. So the... Ruling on the field stands. So it'll be first down and 10 at the 22-yard line of the Bulldogs. As Lee Kirkland, 579 yards. That matches his career high against Cumberland's last year. He threw four touchdowns and two interceptions. I'd say it's safe to say who the uh, Offensive Player of the Week is going to be this week. Uh, it should be. And you may be looking at national honors on this one. Kirkland wants to throw. Pressure coming up the middle, slings this one to the far sideline, zinging it out of bounds. The closest man in the area was Derek Griffith, second down and 10. And that's the thing, when you get to him, even when you do get to him, you're not going to usually take him down with one person. Right. Big guy, he's hard to, hard to bring down. 19 seconds on a rested clock here in the third and final, or third period, excuse me. They'll bring three receivers wide left. Kirkland looking left, 
Fires it to Griffith. He's got the catch inside the 20, angling near sideline at the 15, and is chased out of bounds just shy of the 10. Kiki McMurray, the sophomore, runs him out of bounds. So he They're is going to take him out at the 13 yard line. Now we got a player down for the Bears as Jacob Kopchak, the senior from Sacramento, is down. So an injury timeout, 11 seconds of play here in the third. And it's going to be third down and short coming up on the other side. So we just tied the record now for completions in a game with uh, Trevor Hoskins. He's chasing, he's been chasing him a lot. Yeah, again, and you think about all the stuff that Trevor did. you got to put that in perspective. He did it in three seasons. Yes. Now Trevor, the, uh, the head coach at Paintsville, He's in his third season, I believe, third, yes, sir. Yep, following up Joe Cherico after uh, Coach Cherico won the state championship and then took his uh, duties off to George Rogers Clark down in Winchester. Trevor's a great guy. He is. He is. He, you know, he's, he's got a very young team. Um, I said it's, uh, it's hard to believe where that team is, but uh, they've got a lot of youth on that program. All right, back underway here. Third down and one. High snap to take the give as the tailback will rush up the right edge and move the sticks. And that's Medeco, and that's the end of the third. 45 to three, fourth quarter when we return after this. From the 10, first and goal for the Bears on the U Pike Sports Network. Forty-five to three as we welcome you back here to Hambly Athletic Complex. Bears rolling here tonight on Hall of Fame night. James Carr, Charlie Penson, happy to have you along with us here tonight. First and goal from the ten. Lee Kirkland rewriting the record book tonight. The high snap wants to throw. He's got his man there. He was going for cradle ball. A little tight end pop pass right up the middle there, off his fingertips. Incomplete. Second down. Ten. So Kirkland. Now with a record for most passing attempts, I believe that one – or no, he's, he's, he's coming up on that record. Yeah. He is at the completions of 36. Right. The next one will, will take over Trevor Hoskins from Faulkner back in 2011. Kirkland wants to throw again. Lost the football as he went back with it. It flew out of his hands. He'll jump on it back inside the 25 – We'll take him back around the 2022. So it's going to be third down and goal. That just opens up a little bit of extra room there for yeah. the quarterback. He went backward, and as he did, the ball went out the back end. No, no uh, Tom Brady rule on that one for sure. The ball went right. the wrong direction. So we put three receivers wide right, one left. Pocket collapses, fires it across the middle on a post route, was looking for Griffith, incomplete fourth down. Fourteen eleven on arrested clock here in the ball game. And fourth down and goal from the 23. This is, I mean, everybody has a play call for this. Yeah. They're going to line it up. In a twin set now, Griffith and Henson on the near side wide of the field. And they got movement. So that may get you a free five to move it up a little bit. The question is, did they jump and draw off U-Pike? 
Or did they get the movement on you, right. Pike, first? The he said, she said. And they're over talking about it right now, trying to figure it out. Yo. To God, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a late night. It's easy. It What's is. open late after 11? Nothing. Tonight? You'll need a ticket to get a McDonald's drive through so they'll get the false start. So they called the false start on Derek Griffith. It wasn't even on the line. So now fourth down and 28. Also fourth and goal, by the way, as they'll wind the clock here. And now the officials blow it dead and... Game clock to 14-11. They're going to reset the clock to 14-11. So they'll add five seconds to it. As it was an incomplete pass, so. Two receivers each way for Kirkland on fourth and goal from the 28-yard line. Looking for touchdown pass number seven on the season, on the night. He's going to the end zone. Griffith is near side headed in his mitts at the one and couldn't haul it in. Yep. Perfect pass there for Lee Kirkland on in double coverage. But the fourth down conversion attempt fails and the Bears turn it over back to the Bulldogs at the 28. So he's now tied for completions, as we said earlier. Now he's got the attempts of completions with Xavier Malone, who threw 20, 56 last year in the loss to Lindsey Wilson. So the next completion and attempt by Kirkland will put his name solely atop the record books. So back to the Bulldogs' offensive side of things. Ward takes the handoff, starts left, cuts back up the middle, across the 30, out to the 32, 33-yard line. Chuck Moore making the stop. Put him at the 33, a gain of five, second and five. And you got to think if, if you're Kirkland, you're, you're telling Coach Corey Phipps, listen. Please, please. I, 607 is the number. As soon as I get 608, I'll come out of the ball game. But give me a chance to get 607. That's a record that was set by Trevor Hoskins back in George against Georgetown in 2010. And this is a broken play as Bryson Grabowski, the new quarterback, they snapped the ball and nobody moved. It was like, uh, no, you go, you go, you go. And everybody just stood, and then Grabkowski just said, okay, I'll take it myself. So about a half of a yard loss on the play makes it third down and a long five. So Grabowski, the sophomore, 19 of 51 on the season for 183 yards, one touchdown to seven interceptions. Uh, yeah. High snap, Grabowski turns, looks to the far sideline, zips it out to his man of Wyatt Rugertson, makes the catch, and if we fourth down, it's just short of the marker to gain. They put him down at the 37. They need a 38 to move the sticks. So fourth down and one. It will be fourth down. I've, they've got to go for oh, it absolutely. at this point. I mean, there's no question. They've converted on their only fourth down try tonight. But again, another failed third down conversion. Now two of 15 in the ball game. And play clock is inside of 10. They're just now breaking the huddle. They get set at four. Grabowski takes the ball, gives it off to Jaden Ward. He sweeps off the right edge. And the near side official, the line judge, is already pointing on the ball that's on 35 yards away from him, saying move the sticks. First down, Bulldogs. 13th first down of the ballgame for the Bulldogs. 
Never understood that, an official that yeah. on the far side of the field with the pile going the opposite direction says, yep, move the sticks. When you have a guy standing five yards away from it. Grabowski pulls it out right up the middle of the field. He goes, breaks one tackle, and takes it all the way down inside the 40, the 35. They'll take him off his feet at the 33. So Grabowski with a big run on first down. They'll take him to the 34-yard line. That's the most offense that they've seen here tonight. Chase Mims is down here on the sideline loosening up. Quarterback out of Betsy Lane High School. Here's Ward on a little counter play, and he gets stonewalled in the hole. That's uh, Owen Bloss. Gain of one, second and nine. We'll go across the 10-minute mark on this snap. U Pike going to move to three and two on the season. More importantly, one and zero in AAC conference play. Right, and that's big before going on the road next week to Reinhardt. Grabowski wants to throw. Pressure coming off the edge, rolling out left, and gets tackled. Wow! And gets it away with a big throw near sideline as he floats it into the hands of Rugertson. He is finally tackled out of bounds in front of the. Near side bench. Obi Wilson making the stop, but we got a player down for U Pike. Try not to give up that touchdown. What a throw there by Grabowski. Oh, he was probably inches from the ground when he let that one go. Wyatt Rugertson just found himself in a, uh, a little soft spot of the zone there. So they put him down at the two. It's first and goal. And Union threatening to pick up their first touchdown. You know, if, if you're on the defensive side of things right now, you're saying anything it takes right here to keep them out of the end zone. Yeah. You don't want to give up the you, – you know, you've had the shutout crushed on the on the, the field goal, but you definitely don't want to give up six. You're absolutely right. Trying to see – who they're working on. I believe this is Timothy Butler. It's hard to tell with the jersey, the way that he's sitting. Coach Phipps is going to give him a hand to his feet, and that's exactly what it is. So, Timothy Butler, the graduate student from Plantation, Florida, of an American heritage. He comes to his feet, jogs back down the bench. So, the certified athletic training staff here for the Bears. Give him a hand back to his feet. He seems to be good to go as he separates and goes down into the bench. So first and goal from the two now for Bryson Grabowski and his Bulldogs, a man in motion. Rolling out right, Grabowski surveying, finds a seam, and he walks into the end zone yep. for six touchdown to Union. That was a smart play there by Grabowski. He was wanting to throw it. And just found a seam open right up in front of him and just takes off for the two-yard scamper. That's the first rushing touchdown for the Bulldogs this entire season. Wow. Five games in. 9.32 to play here in the ball game. 45-9 to nine with an extra point coming. Dustin Brown. Brown on for the kick. Ball is down, kick is up, and is good. 45-10, 9.32 to go in the game. Back after this on the U-Pike Sports Network.
45 to 10 as we welcome you back here to Hambly. James Carter, Charlie Pinson, executive producer, nice David Chapman, Zach Meek, and help me out, Maggie, Maggie Burgess. Thank you. I had the, I had the first name, but I lost the last name. Maggie Purvis, again, uh, our crew here tonight. Fabulous job, as always, here on the UPike Sports Network. So kickoff coming up for the Bulldogs as they get their first rushing touchdown of the season. A good little pooch kick that will take a nice side. bump and run and finally tumbles into the end zone for a touchback. So Braylon Barton. Found himself in a precarious yeah. situation there. At, at the 10, he's kind of like, okay, do I, do I grab this or not? And is it going to make it into the end zone? <laughs> you know, I saw a high school game two weeks ago. There was a kickoff, and for some reason, the, the young man that was back for return, he let the ball bounce in front of him, and then he didn't pick it up. And the team flies down, pounces on the ball, and all of a sudden he's like, wait a minute, what are they doing? And they recover the kickoff on a long kickoff. And I don't know if he just didn't realize the rule of what it was or yep. what, but, uh, yeah, that ball was a live ball, and you see those happen so often. Here's a handoff off left tackle. As Tyrese Christensen on the carry. Tyrese Christensen on the carry. In between the hashes at the 28-yard line. Gain of three, second down, and seven. Kirkland wants to throw. Pats it in, brings it near sideline. That's Derek Griffith who makes the catch at midfield, and that resets the record for completions and attempts. At the top of the list now is Lee Kirkland. So Kirkland is now... As soon as they put this number in, we'll see how close he is. He's not too far from taking the record for passing yardage. So 23 yards. That right there rewrites the record book. Or no, puts him at 601. They'll swing it out to Sanders. Or check that, that's Christensen who makes the catch at the 50. Goes forward out to the... Just shy of the 45. Check that, that's 6-11. There we go. So there's the new record for passing yardage as well for Lee Kirkland. Ladies and gentlemen, with that completion, Lee Kirkland has set the school record for passing yards in the game with 611. What a night for this young man. That was a record I didn't think I'd ever see fall. No, I didn't either. Kirkland pulls it down, runs, and a slip and slide as he upends. The uh, defensive tackle off the near sideline as he sweeps out the feet of Zane Hammock. May give him a chance to try to get that last touchdown here. I think so. And, and again, it's you you think of it, you know, you don't want to get the, get him hurt or take any chances of that. You're not trying to run the score up, but you got to give it. This guy has had the opportunity here to, to get that spot. You want to give him a chance. And you look at a, a, a the touchdowns in a game of of six, he's tied that along with with Hoskins and Xavier Malone from last season that did it. High snap, give to Christensen as he goes off the left side, gets inside the forty, and then will move the sticks for another first down. Yeah, the wide receiver over helping him out with that. Said, "Come on, move it over here. We're good. Yeah, we're good." Six fourteen on the night, thirty-eight for fifty-eight. Lee and Lee Kirkland's night is done. Six touchdowns on the evening. He'll hand it off as Garrison Barrett, Churchill, Tennessee. Hand off as a nice run here on first down as Christensen hurdles a guy 15 with reservations for six to the other side. 37-yard touchdown run by Tyrese Christensen. Touchdown Bears. His first rushing touchdown of the season. And what a big one it was there. 
Nice piece of running there by Christensen to get in and add to the score, 51 to 10. Trying the PAT here with the big lead. I mean, 41-point lead. It's been an impressive day for the Bears. It's uh, like we said, they they hit it right out of the gate, and it was uh, from the word go. Was a lopsided victory here. 52 to 10, 618 to play in the ball game. Back after this on the UPike Sports Network. Fifty-two to ten, as they just made the announcements on the overhead, as Lee Kirkland has rewritten a lot of records that Charlie. I think you and I would agree that some didn't think would ever be touched. Uh, that I passing, right. that passing record in the 2010 of 607 yards. To put this in perspective, Kirkland had 581 yards coming into this game. Yeah, he finishes tonight with 614, 38 of 58. Six touchdowns that ties a school record. One interception on the on the deflected ball. Derek Griffith has reset or has uh, made school history. 233 yards on 10 catches tonight. Two touchdowns. Three players over the century mark. Henson with 106. Barton with 103. But uh, and you think about it, you, you think you're Derek Griffith, like, Man, I should have offensive player of the week. And yeah, he's, he's, he's going to play second fiddle yeah, to Kirkland. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it, any other week, you know, yeah. it'd be me. He's know? like, thanks, Lee. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. It's it's just tonight, this team, you know, whatever it found coming out of the bye week. This is something you hope you can hang your hat on if yes. you're if you're a Bears fan because that right there was just phenomenal. I'll throw Griffith another one in. <laughs> Yeah, Tyrese Christensen caught 11 earlier this year against Georgetown. That tied him with Jordan Amos and Axel Rivas. Rivas was uh, the uh, guy that was on the reception side of Trevor Hoskins. Here's Ward sweeping off the right side. Gets spun down at the 30. They'll give him the 30. Yeah, they'll keep him at the 30. Sorry to go to the 31. Rick Bentley's going to have a busy week this week. He's got a lot of rewriting to do. 32. So we're inside of six to go. Have fill all those nomination forms, too. Absolutely. And Lee Kirkland, I, I would say you'll probably see him as a, a very high-quality candidate for National Offensive Player of the Week. Hey, how about this? The NAI record for passing yards in the game is 637. Well, just told that the record for passing yards in an NAI game was 637. Get the ball back and get Lee back out there for a couple passes. <laughs> I think I think Coach Corey Phipps is content exactly with what he's got here. And and, uh, and you think about you know there there wasn't a lot of missed opportunities there with no. the passes from Kirkland tonight. He was very smart with the football, and I think that's I think it's probably one of the biggest things that I think Coach Corey Phipps is going to be pleased with what he saw from his quarterback progression tonight. Grabowski trying to escape. He gets drilled on the near sideline as flying in and making the big hit there and then picking up a late penalty on the back end for taunting. So on the stop was Beldegard, and then he's going to pick up 15 on the back end of it. Again, you, you had the big play. You didn't need the extra 15 on it. So the penalty, instead of being fourth down on the incomplete pass, will 
give Union another fresh set of downs. Yep. You know, the old, old saying goes back to scoreboard down the distance. Yes, it does. That's yeah. the three things in the game that you always got to know what it is. You gotta, if you want to say something, just sit up and just go like this. 52 to 10, there's no need to stand up and stand over top of a backup quarterback nope. that you just drilled. So put it out to the 48-yard line of the Bulldogs. Grabowski will zip it out to the far sideline. He's got his man there. Landed Couch making the st making the grab out of Pineville, Kentucky. 6'2", 190-pound wide receiver. Pineville, how far is that from here, Charlie? Pineville? Pineville. Pineville, okay. Pineville's about, oh, five or six hours. Yeah. Pretty good drive. But it, let's see, what, isn't that down in, it's down in the, uh, oh, down in Jackson, isn't it? A little past Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Second and seven, handoff Ward. Bounces right up the middle, tries to bring it to the near sideline, gets a seam, and nice stop there with the Tay Michael Shellman got him around the ankles. That'll move the sticks. And another Bulldogs first down. We'll go inside of four minutes to go in the ball game on this snap. So Union's going to lose its fourth straight. They'll go to one and four on the season. U Pike up to three and two. Coach Corey Phipps will go to 13 and 12 in his tenure. And now his third season here. On the road next week to Reinhardt, then back here two weeks on the 14th. They'll bring in KCU for homecoming. Ward, nice little run there on first down inside the 40, shy of the 35 to the 37. Gain of six. They're subbing in players left and right for the Bears of kind of a hockey line change, if you will. Everybody's getting some opportunities here tonight. Hey, you know, it, the scoreboard's the only thing that can change at this point. Good night on Hall of Fame evening. Good crowd in attendance. A good new class coming in to the, uh, the U-Pike Hall of Fame. And more importantly, a good start in AAC play in the first ever AAC contest. And another flag nah, coming out late. Know, you, they, if you didn't blow the whistle, that flag's on you. Yeah, absolutely. That one... Those two guys were engaged, and they stayed through the through the penalty or the play. Excuse me. I think you can go both ways here. Altman on the tackle. Personal foul. I'm going to say defense number seven. Okay, Tyrod and Barry. If you didn't blow the whistle, that one's on you. My fault. I don't. You know. I didn't see if that one. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I didn't see something he saw. Yeah, from here it looked like they were pretty much both engaged and played through until that whistle came late. So, either way, take it down inside the 25-yard line to the 23. First down and 10 for Union. So, Bryson Grabowski with a rushing touchdown. Now he's trying to punch in a few extra here with 2.30 to go in the ball game. He'll give it off to Ward on a sweep to the left. Ward finds a crease and goes down to the 15-yard line. So all together tonight, 72 plays, 675 total yards of offense. That's a team that coming in was averaging 327 in total offense. They've doubled up the numbers in one evening. Here's Ward. Finds a crease right side, down inside the 10 to the 6. 61 rushing yards on the night, and uh, you got to remember 30, I think 31 or 37 of those came from Tyus Christian on that, on that touchdown run. Yeah. 38 of 58 through the air, only one interception, six touchdown passes. And here's the the, the most remarkable number of the whole thing. You probably had the football for 21 minutes yes. and 19 seconds tonight. So a lot of uh, quick drives. This one gets away from Grabowski. He'll turn and sling it to the far sideline. 
that's intentional grounding. I think he's right. It should be. Michael Hobby was the man that was chasing him down. He was not out of the tackle box, and there's the penalty marker. Yeah, there was. He was checking with his official on the far sideline to make certain that there was not a receiver in the area. So again, not outside the tackle box will be a loss of downs, and then from the spot where he threw the football. Because he never looked for him, he just picked it up and slung, slung it to the end of the sideline. That's one of those things when it, the ball went past him, he got to it, and as soon as he turned, he looked and saw a, a black jersey running straight at him. He said, enough of this, I'm, I'm getting rid of this football. <laughs> So move the football back to the 25. So the, again, intentional grounding, it's from the spot of where the throw was attempted and then you also lose a down. So now it's second down from the 25. So second and goal from the 25. Grabowski zings it out near sideline on a low throw as it at the feet of Chris Thomas, incomplete well, third and goal. Intended for Thomas, Minute 23 to go. Stay tuned with us after the game. We'll have scoring and stats of this one. Talk with head coach Corey Phipps. Good night for the Bears to open up AAC conference play. Fifty-two to nineteen fifty-two to ten win, excuse me, at the moment. Unless the Bulldogs could find more here late. Grabowski steps up, pops it out to his Tied in of James Tucker inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. It's fourth down and goal. So from the 19 yard line, and they're going to line it up and try a field goal. So the run out there, kicker of Dustin Brown. So this will be from the far side hash mark at the 26, so a 36 yard kick. The snap, the hold, the kick, low line drive kick, and is wide left. No good. So 39 seconds to go. A knee that will put this one in the record books. And Lee Kirkland puts his name all over this one here tonight. So the difference between the two games – the record-setting game here in Trevor Hoskins' record-setting game against Georgetown 2010, that was a shootout. 70 to 58, 128 points. points scored in that ball game. I don't know that you could do that on a video game. I can't imagine. I would like to know what the total yards between the two teams was. Oh, I, mean, it, I would say you were probably easily uh, 13, 1,400. So we See. get one final carry. And they're going to spot the football and snap it one final time. Hand off left side, and that'll be your ball game. Final score here tonight, U-Pike wins at 52-10 on Hall of Fame night. 